I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm fashion and beauty expert Makon Jovo, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. This is Shop All Day, Ready, Set, Summer. Hi, I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. Now today, we're bringing you sunshine and all things summer style, from matching swimsuits for the entire family, including the towel, to all of this season's sandal trends. And don't forget beauty and accessories for the warmer weather. We've got you covered. And remember, see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can even text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. First, let's talk bathing suits. And newsflash, like many of you out there, I love, love, love a matching set. You can imagine my joy when I discovered these bold and coordinating beach towels from Old Navy with bathing suits to match. Oh my gosh, that would have been enough to make my entire week. But then as I scroll down the page, I almost lost it. Turns out that there's even more matching to be had. Not only can you match your bathing suit to your towel, you can also match your bathing suit with your entire family. Yes, there are matching bathing suit styles for women, men, boys and girls, and they are really, really adorable. How fun are these prints? Pink flamingos, bold sunflowers. I love the yellow and black and the towels. It's so chic. And the matching trend is really big. And I think this would make such a cute family photo up and also a really cute idea for couples too. Next up, say hello to one of my favorite sporty trends of the season. Ta-da, it's the tennis court. Yes, tennis court slash all things tennis is shaping up to be one of the top trends of the summer. The beauty of the skirt, as you are likely aware, is that it is a skirt short hybrid. So it's a skirt with a built-in biking short underneath, which makes it an excellent option for any outdoor activity. But here's the thing, especially with this black one, we're seeing women wear their skirts not just for sporty endeavors, but pretty much everywhere. From shopping to lunch to lounging around the house. And how cute is this little skirt. This is a really flattering silhouette. It's got a high waist, which is elastic. And check this out. I mean, loving, loving, loving the little pleating. And look at the shorts underneath. It's got two pockets here. And it's also got a little hidden zipper pocket in the waistband. And the brand says it's made out of a really light and breathable poly spandex blend with a little compression. So who doesn't love that, right? And it comes in 20 fun colors. So gain, set, and match. This sporty skirt is a real winner. Moving on to one of my favorite accessories for summer, the straw bag. Yes, natural woven bags are one of the hottest accessory trends of the season. And I really, really love this stylish bag from Amazon. It's an affordable take on the trend, and it's made of rattan, which is a palm vine that it's been hand woven in this really beautiful herringbone pattern. Plus, straw is the perfect summer neutral. You really can wear it with anything. And I love how versatile these little bags are. You can take it from the beach to brunch and beyond. It's big enough to carry your essentials, your wallet, sunglasses, computer, towels, you name it. And I love this pom-pom detail. And it even has a removable tassel. So this bag is gonna take you anywhere you need to go this summer in style. And if you were curious about what shoes I'll be wearing all summer, then look no further than these two bestsellers. They're part of a big trend out there called recovery slides, which are sandals originally designed to help you recover after workouts. 
but they're also part of another less scientific trend called the squishy sandal trend. But regardless of what trend you assign them to, the bottom line is they are so comfy that you are never going to want to take them off your feet. I was introduced to this first pair from a brand called Ufos because my 10-year-old niece had them and she let me try them on. And that was it. I have been obsessed ever since. They are absolute comfort. And what makes them so dreamy is the foam technology. It feels like a thick arch supporting foam platform that the brand says absorbs more impact than traditional footwear. And according to the brand, the footbed is designed to reduce stress on knees, ankles, and other joints. And now for another fashion forward and affordable take on the recovery slide, we've also got a version of the squishy recovery sandal from Amazon. And shoppers call these cloud slides and they live up to their name. I have a pair of these and you feel like you are walking on a fluffy cloud. So you can wear these everywhere from the beach to the pool to the gym, running around the house, running around town or you can really just wear them anytime you want to make your feet happy. And I love all the colors. There's a great selection of both neutrals and brights, but I say go with the brights this summer. So next, let's talk about another slide trend that you are going to want to know about this summer, the braided slide. Yes, this trend might just be one of the biggest of the season. And you're gonna see this braided design detail pretty much everywhere. And these little takes from Nordstrom are an excellent example of the trend. I mean, they've got that great oversized braided strap and it's actually padded, so it really makes a statement. Plus, these slides are no shrinking wallflowers. I love how they look on the foot. They've also got great details like the square toe silhouette, which we're also seeing everywhere. And they come in great neutrals, but I'm also really loving these new neutrals. Pastel yellow and purple are, in my view, the new neutrals of the summer. And surprisingly, they really do go with so much. So for the price, there is no better option for a wear anywhere on trend slide. And these really look expensive to me. Now, summer means sunshine and a perfect excuse for new sunnies. And I have one word for this pair chic. And these, I think, are beautiful. Check out the tortoise detail. Tortoise is a really big trend we're seeing out there this summer, as well as the oversized retro look. I've got to tell you, this fabulous oversized shape really does look great on pretty much every face shape. And I think they look really expensive. And my favorite thing about this brand is that every time I wear these, someone asks me if they're by a high-end designer. And I say, no, they're not. You can have them too for under $30. And last but not least, I have been trying to get this set of resin acrylic cocktail rings into an episode for months. In fact, I brought mine from home. I'm wearing one right now. <laughs> and big chunky acrylic or resin rings are a massive trend. And we've seen some very expensive offerings from major designers. So I was thrilled to find this set of five for such an affordable price. And what I think is so fun about a cocktail ring is they're sort of a statement look, right? But they're made out of acrylic or resin and they come in so many fun colors. I'm constantly wearing the clear or the black, but I can't wait to try out the white or the bright green this summer. I think they're gonna be so much fun. So let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the Old Navy beach towel and matching bathing suits, the pleated tennis skirt, the rattan bag with pom-poms, the recovery slides, the Luca Slide Sandal, the Peepers Tokyo Square Tortoiseshell Sunglasses, and the Resin Cocktail Rings. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, McCohen Lovu is talking to Florida Maria Rivera, who went from TV reporter to shoe designer. She'll walk us through more of this summer's shoe trends. Stay with us.
Hi there, welcome back. I'm Ma Konjovu and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. Summer is finally here and warmer weather brings new styles. And I'm excited because we have TV reporter turned entrepreneur Flor de Maria Rivera, who has her own shoe line. How fun is that to design shoes for a living? I love it. She's here with her favorite trends for this summer. Hi, Flor. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you, Mako. <laughs> Wow, you're so talented. I mean, that goes Aww. without saying, but your shoes are some of the, no lie, some of the most beautiful shoes I've seen. Like, really? Oh. No, you're going to make me cry before. <laughs> I still get so emotional over my shoes because it's been such a long journey, you know, to get to where I am. But I feel so blessed because so many celebrities have worn it and I'm self-funded and I've switched careers so many times in my life. and. I mean, I'm 46, so people oh. told me I was crazy to start the line in my 40s, but I'd never listened to anybody. You're doing it. You look amazing. Oh. The shoes are amazing. I've been in shoe heaven with my own shoes for the past two and a half years, so it just sometimes it just it still feels like a dream. Yeah, what a wonderful dream to be in. So let's talk about your pivot, because I think your story is so interesting. You're a sports anchor, and then you decided to design your own shoe collection. Do you remember the exact moment that you decided you wanted to go down that path? Yeah, I've always wanted to do it, but I just felt like I was never ready. And then one day I was actually at a lake. I was reading a book and something in that book told me this is the moment. And that's when I say, I am finally doing my shoe line. I am never going to be ready. And this is just the time. And that was summer of 2017. And here we are. <laughs> and here you are thriving and shining. Walk me through your inspiration, right? When you're designing the shoe, do you get the idea in your head first or do you just kind of like jot it out as you go along? That's an amazing question because there's so many different ways. Like the first season, I actually had a mood board and my first collection was inspired by Peru. That's where I'm from. That's where I was born. And those are my roots. But then later when the pandemic happened, I just found myself not traveling as much. And I found myself at home. Honestly, if you walk into my house, you'll find a little notebook in every little corner. Sometimes I have ideas and I just start sketching away. And lately, I think that's what's happened. I don't even look at the mood board that I have. Inspiration just happened. The other day I was watching a movie and I thought of something and I think, Mako, it's going to be my hottest sandal yet. <laughs> oh, your hottest sandal. I don't know how you can pop this because this is a big thing. So the theme of the show is Ready, Set, Summer. And I'm just curious to know, like, what are some of the themes that we can expect to see or some of the trends that we can expect to see in the summer? As far as shoes goes, lace-ups. Lace-ups have been everywhere on the runways. You see one of my favorite styles. It was named after my grandma, Raquel. This is a nude color, and it pretty much goes with everything. And when I'm talking about lace-ups, this one can tie around the ankles, or it can also tie all the way up to your knees. Uh, so that's one choice. But then also I'm talking about lace-ups in the way that it's just a sexy estiletto that just wraps around the ankles. So that's one of the biggest trends uh, this season. Also also, Michael, I know you loved it, and it's this bold color right here. Uh -huh. <laughs> The neon. Neons are huge in the summer. I love the neon, but I also <laughs> love these as well. Can you tell me what inspired the collection? That one has a mixture of silk satin, it's got crystals, and it also got pony hair. But then you usually are used to leopard in the brown and black shades, but I love going all out. I love a showstopper shoe, and that one is yellow with black leopard. I mean, I wish you guys could see the detail on this shoe, the straps. I mean, it's just so absolutely beautiful how does it make you feel seeing celebrities wear your shoes because you were telling me earlier that you started you know later on in life in terms of designing shoes what does it make you feel like when you see celebrities rocking your shoes uh, sometimes I honestly still can't believe it and lately I just get so teary-eyed because it's not only about this moment but for me it's always been following my dreams especially my parents moved from Peru left everything behind to give us a better life and I want to honor that and I want to make them proud so for me it takes me back on time and all the sacrifices my parents have to do and also as a Latina as a woman as a minority as a woman of color I hope and, and pray that I can open doors for those that come behind me or those that come alongside with me.
Oh my gosh, how inspiring. I know your parents, your community, mm -hmm. everyone is so proud of you. All right, the theme again is Ready, Set, Summer. So let's talk about sunglasses. These are so stylish, right? I love that they come in a bunch of different colorways, but they also have important functions. Can you tell me about them? Yes, so a sporting sunglasses. Ooh, Marco, they look so good on you. <laughs> Thank you, Flor. Thank you. Sporty sunglasses are one of the hottest trends that we've seen on the runway. The reason why I love this one, do you like this one, Macron? I love the white, first of all. I love the pop of color. They look great on you. And don't they feel great too? Oh my God, they feel so lightweight. And the best thing is that they cost less than $25. So it is amazing. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars to look good. So this is more of an angular style that it's also a hot trend. But if you notice, these ones are blue with the white. They can also come with different color lenses. So it just depends what you like. And if you're like me, I will rock this with something neon. <laughs> but it's also, if you're a minimalist, you can wear this with more of a neutral outfit and you can let the, the sunglasses stand out. Speaking of accessories doing the talking, let's move on to this necklace. This necklace, Flora, just screams summer to me. How do you style it though? Do you wear it with like neutrals or you do pops of color? This is just beautiful pastel color. So if you want to pick one of these colors, let's say the yellow or the coral, you can pick a dress or a top or anything that has one of those colors and you're set. And what I love about this necklace, it's a Y2K trend that has come back. It's all over our closet and now it's taking on to jewelry. So it's supposed to be a hottest trend for the summer as well. We saw it on the runway. This is a winning, winning necklace. Speaking of winning, uh, and TikTok trends. I've seen gua sha tools all over my social media, but Flora, tell me, what are the benefits of using gua sha? You know, I swear by this little stone, even though when beauty gadgets we have become so popular and some of them can cost hundreds of dollars. Do you gua sha, Michael? You look like I you do. do. I do, I actually do. And I like that it like wakes up my face, especially when I wake up in the morning, right? So I usually do it in the morning. <laughs> I do it, don't forget about the neck. So I love to apply a little bit of oil Right? And then you just start on the neck, move upwards, Michael, right? I love this round one. And then like you did it before, I love to go around my jawline after the neck. And I just, when I get to the end, see, I just stay there. I do it at least five times in one section, and then you work your way up. And there's so many videos if you want to learn nowadays, and I love like the one that you have, the rose quartz, but don't worry about trying different ones. The stone doesn't really matter. There's a J and there's different ones. This one I just love because it pinks, it looks pretty in the vanity. It's so pretty. Isn't it so, it's so pretty? It's relaxing too. Like as we were trying yes. it, I instantly felt like, oh my God, imagine coming home after a long day, instant relaxation. So Flora, I love that you brought the self tanner. Tell me how it's different from the other ones that are on the market. Yes, that's a saint one. I tried different one, but I think that one has become my favorite because not only it dries fast, but it just gives you the perfect golden tone. It's not too light, it's not too dark, but if you're trying a bronzer, make sure you use a glove because if you get it in your hand, sometimes they turn orange and it can be, yes, Michael, see, you know, you know. <laughs> it can turn, your hands can turn orange and trust me, it can take days to get that, rid of that. But I think that's a perfect one, you know, to just get your natural glow, like you just came back from vacation without having to go, you know, get a, a spray tan that those can be really expensive sometimes, or you don't, you know, you're not at the beach or you, you want to take care of your skin. I think that's always a, a great option. That's such a great point. Well, Flora, we are ready for summer. Thank you for stopping by <laughs> and giving us all these great selections. Have a great summer, okay? Thank you. Now let's run through all the products one more time. The Flor de Maria sandals, the sporty sunglasses, the multicolored necklace, the gua sha tool, and the Centro Pay self tan bronzing mousse. And just so you know, Flor de Maria once worked for Telemundo, which is part of our parent company, NBC Universal. Up next, Adriana Brock continues to soak in the sun with everything from accessories to keep you cool to solutions for slicing all that summer fruit. Don't go away.
everyone, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock, and now that summer is finally here, it is time to slip on your sandals and get ready for the pool and beach season. I cannot wait to show you my editor's picks. From accessories to keep you looking and feeling cool in the warmer weather, to hacks for cutting all that delicious summer fruit we love. And remember, see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. So speaking of cute summer accessories, let's discuss this hat. It is the number one best-selling hat on Amazon and has over 25,000 reviews. So what makes it so great? Not only is this a great looking hat that can go with any summer outfit, according to the brand, it is also basically crush proof because it is designed to fold up and roll up easily so that you can toss it in your purse or your suitcase all summer long. If hats aren't for you, let's talk hair. In the summer, when the heat is on the rise, we all love to throw our hair into a ponytail to keep cool. So this set is going to be an essential for you. It comes in a set of 12 scrunchies for an incredibly affordable price. You get a ton of prints from florals, polka dots, even classic stripes so that you can match all of your summer outfits. And not only do they come in fun prints to match any outfit, but they have a cute scarf detailing attached to them to give your hairstyle a stylish little flair. Moving on to another accessory I'm a personal fan of, if I could only wear one pair of sandals all summer long, it would be the classic Birkenstock sandal. These are the brand's best-selling two-strap Arizona style. The brand says that this version is actually waterproof thanks to this rubber-like texture, which makes them incredibly lightweight. And they're perfect for all of those summer vacations, trips to the pool and the beach, or just a chill weekend in the backyard. Either way, you're still gonna get the support and comfort of a Birkenstock sandal with an adjustable buckle, and you can choose from a ton of different bright colors to jazz up any outfit. And with summer right around the corner, now is the perfect time to check those sunscreen expiration dates. You're gonna wanna stock up on new ones for those sunny days ahead. Today.com actually spoke with a dermatologist who recommends this very product. It also happens to be a favorite among the team. It's the CeraVe SPF 30 facial sunscreen that offers protection and doubles as a moisturizer, so there's no excuse not to use it daily. So we've covered style and your skin. Let's talk about the ultimate outdoor blanket because it is so large. It can fit up to three to five adults and you could use it anywhere from the beach to the park, even camping because according to the brand, it is waterproof and sandproof. It also weighs less than one pound and easily folds right back up into a carrying case that it comes with. And once you fold it up, it's about the size of a tablet, pretty small so you can pop it in your bag for on the go use. Plus, with all these bright colors to choose from, it's gonna be so easy to spot your crew from the beach. And it comes with four little anchors to keep home base in place. Speaking of home base, we found three incredible kitchen tools you're gonna wanna pick up if you're entertaining this summer. First, a handheld slicer that makes prepping some of the toughest fruit a lot easier. I'm talking about watermelons, honeydew, and cantaloupe. It has a large round design with these sturdy handles that's gonna do all the heavy slicing for you. And we can't get over how this gadget is big enough for an average sized watermelon. The trick is to cut your melon in half before you slice it to make it a little bit easier to slice up. If you're more of a pineapple lover, the stainless steel tool cuts perfect slices and does all the heavy lifting by removing the core for you. All you have to do is cut off the top of the pineapple, push down and twist all the way to the bottom to get those perfect slices. Once the core is pulled out, you can also use your now hollow pineapple for some festive drinks. Lastly, the strawberry slicer really cuts down on prep time, which is a game changer when you're hosting or you have hungry kids to feed. This little gadget is going to save so much time and you keep all your knives in the kitchen drawers. All you have to do is place the fruit inside of the gadget, give it a squeeze, and you're gonna get the perfect slices every time. It's actually designed for strawberries, but you can use it for grapes and other small fruits too. Let's run through the products one more time. The roll-up straw hat, the 12-piece scrunchie set, the Birkenstock Eva sandal, the CeraVe moisturizer with SPF 30, the beach blanket, the watermelon slicer, the pineapple core, and the strawberry slicer. 
And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on editors' picks and for our show. It's been so much fun showing you all of our summer favorites. Tune in next week for an all new episode of Shop All Day. Thanks for watching. We are cooking up some exciting things this week in the brand new Today All Day Kitchen. Up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada <laughs> will show you how to rescue any brown spotty bananas with two tasty treats, chocolate chip banana bread bars and a banana cream cheesecake that just happens to be dairy free. Welcome to Hashtag Cooking. The next time you see some nearly perished super ripe banana sitting on your counter wondering what will become of their existence, like will we get thrown away today? Don't toss them, please save them. Rescue the spotty bananas, hashtag save the spotty bananas and make these recipes. I'm gonna show you two of my favorite ways to use those super ripe bananas sitting on your counter. My chocolate chip banana bread bars and my banana cream cheesecake that happens to be dairy free. Let's get Hashtag Cooking. Just for one second, okay, I want you to forget about those microwave packets of oatmeal. And we're gonna give oatmeal a glamorous moment with these chocolate chip banana bread bars. I've already preheated my oven to 375 degrees, and now all I'm going to do is prepare my pan. So what I've done here, greased it with some coconut oil so our parchment paper doesn't stick, right? So I've got that here. I'm just gonna stick it right into the pan. The coconut oil helps it stick, right? So this is nice. Make sure we're hitting all of the edges of the pan. And what's nice is that we're creating these flaps, okay? The flaps are really nice because when it's done baking, we'll be able to easily lift the batter out of the pan and have our bars all ready. What's great about using super ripe bananas in recipes is that they're naturally a lot sweeter and a lot easier to mash into different recipes. Got two here. We're rescuing them. We're giving them a second life, a second chance at life. They love us for this. Throwing the peels away. Gonna peel this one like so, pop that in, see you later. Okay, and now we're just gonna mash. This is kind of where you can get your aggression of the day out <laughs> into these bananas, okay? I wanna mash them until they're really nice and smooth. And like I said, because they're a bit riper, it's gonna be a lot softer and easier to mash. Not to mention it's gonna impart a lot of that really nice, sweet, ripe flavor of the bananas into this oatmeal bar recipe. And because they're super ripe, we're actually not gonna use a bunch of sugar to sweeten this recipe because it's gonna pull a lot of that natural sweetness from the bananas. Have I convinced you to not throw your bananas away yet? Just wondering. Okay. Really take your time here, <laughs> like I am. Okay. I want no banana to feel unmashed. I want it to feel all loved and mashed, <laughs> okay? All right. And you can use a potato masher here if you have that, if you like that utensil for your life. I'm just using a fork because you know what? Forks are accessible. Okay. So this is looking pretty good. I have to compliment myself on my mashing abilities. Looks pretty smooth. And now we're just gonna work on the rest of our ingredients. All right, so in this recipe, I'm using two eggs, so I'm gonna crack those both in here. I wanna be that type of person that does like the one-handed egg crack. I'm not, I'm not that person. I'm safe, <laughs> I take precautions. <laughs> All right, okay, now I'm gonna whisk the eggs and the bananas together. So everything is nice and smooth. Look at those amber yolks. It's pretty nice. Bananas and eggs, 
whisk together. They look nice and smooth, really happy in there. Now I'm gonna add my nut butter. So I'm actually using peanut butter here, but if you have a cashew butter at home, if you have an almond butter, that's totally fine. You do you. Whatever nut butter is you're harboring in your pantry, I know I have like a million because I have a problem, uh, but you can use that. I'm gonna slide that straight in there. Now I'm gonna mix that in. All right, and then I'm gonna add my melted and cooled coconut oil, my vanilla extract, and if you haven't noticed already, the best part about this recipe, other than giving your sad bananas a second life, is the fact that we're making everything in one bowl. Like, you can thank me later for the less dishes that you'll have to do in your life, okay? I'm just using a touch of coconut sugar, gonna add that in there, and then some maple syrup. It's gonna really give this nice, warm, golden flavor to these oatmeal bars. Now that I've mixed all my wet ingredients together, I'm gonna grab my oatmeal, the star of the show. It's about to be super glamorous. Add it straight in here. Along with some cinnamon. I love cinnamon, I think it's amazing, but you can totally use another spice if you want. You can use maybe a nutmeg if you like that better. I'll leave that choice up to you. And then some baking powder. And then, and mix everything together. Make sure everyone just becomes friends in here. Make sure we grab the edges, the sides of the bowl. Incorporate it really nicely. It smells so good. Mmm. Just wait till it's done baking though. That's good stuff. Okay. Now finally, this is a bit of the dessert for breakfast moment that I like to really capture in all aspects of my life, the chocolate chips. Just gonna fold these in. I will add, I don't measure these with anything but my soul. That's just how I choose to live my life, but again, you live yours the way you wanna live yours. I'm gonna fold that in, and you're probably wondering, like, Sama, why do you have some of these left over? Because I wanna save some for the top. Because for me, it's not less is more. When it comes to chocolate, not a thing for me. Okay, folding this in nicely until all the chocolate chips are just really nestled in there. <laughs> we want them to be cozy. Okay, perfect. Now, I love myself for being prepared. We've got our parchment lined pan and I'm just gonna add it straight into there. So let's lift this up. I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is my workout for the day, this movement right here. All right, so we're gonna add this straight in there. Get everything out, scrape the sides. Oh my God, I cannot leave that chocolate chip behind. That would be so sad. Okay. And then I'm just gonna spread it out throughout the pan so it's nice and evenly distributed. <laughs> Okay, because I am me, I'm gonna add some more chocolate chips on top, just for aesthetics. I like to take nice photos of my food. It's also really fun to make it presentable and looks pretty, too pretty to eat, but not really, because we will be eating it. Okay, and then the last, the last thing that I wanna do is add a banana on top. This is, again, purely for <laughs> me to have some nice aesthetics for my photographs, and that's fine. That's again, how I choose to live my life. So what I'm gonna do is just cut it right at the tip of the banana, slice it straight through like this, okay? And now I'm just gonna peel this off like I normally would. And then you've got two perfect halves of banana. Pretty easy. I'm gonna lift it straight out and I'm gonna place it on my bars, like that, and then the other half. And then I'm gonna add one more for the middle. Go ahead, and again, I have a piece of oatmeal on my finger. <laughs> really didn't wanna be baked, okay. And go from the top, slice it straight down the middle. Fill 
Summer Sky off. Look at that. Hold that straight. And there, we're gonna nestle it down nicely. Wants to feel secure, wants to feel at home. And now, I'm just gonna add a little dusting of cinnamon on top, partially because I love cinnamon and partially because I want it to look really nice. Okay, now we're gonna take a little journey in the oven for about 22 to 25 minutes. Let's go. All right, hope you enjoy your time in there. All right, we've let it cool for about 10 minutes, and now, see, this is why we love being prepared with the parchment paper. We get to just lift this straight out of the pan, and then there's no oatmeal bar that's been left behind. Like that. Okay, so the best thing about these bars, other than the fact that we're saving so many bananas' lives, is that they're super portable. So I'm just gonna slice them into little bars. You can take them on the go. You can just also have a nice sit-down oatmeal moment at home. You choose whatever you'd like to do. I love the corner piece. I'm just one of those people. Don't know why. Just crispy and caramelized on the edges. It's so good. Look at that. Delicious. And now remember these chocolate chips that I had saved for the top? See, this is why. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of powdered sugar just to get that nice contrast. A little bit there. Just on the rest of my bars. It's really pretty. Oh, went a little heavy handed over there. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a few pictures of it. Cause I didn't put that powdered sugar, that banana, those chocolate chips on for nothing. All right. There we go. <laughs> I'm really getting the shot. <laughs> little video. Get the inside. Okay, you know what? I think we got the shot. It's my time to taste. I'm pretty excited about this. Mmm. This is so good. You know what's really nice about this as well? It's not too sweet. So it's really great if you'd like to even add a little drizzle of honey on top maybe a little more peanut butter, almond butter, whatever you have to kind of create this nice sit down oatmeal moment at home. It's like banana bread, but it's a little more textured from the oatmeal. And then you've got the chocolate chips that are totally giving it this like cookie dough vibe. I would eat cookie dough for breakfast. And I am kind of, delish. This has inspired me and I have a lot more ripe bananas in my kitchen. So I think 
we might have to make my banana cream cheesecake. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients. Okay, do you want to know something crazy about this cheesecake? You don't have to bake it. No ovens are involved. We're just going to pop into the freezer to make it, which kind of means it's a cross between an ice cream bar and a cheesecake. Two things I really can't live my life without. So let's make it. The first thing I'm going to do is prepare my pan with some parchment paper. So what I'm going to do is just line it straight into the pan and I'm creating these flaps on the sides so that it's gonna be super easy to lift the cheesecake up after it's done freezing. Just like that. And now it's ready for our crust to find a home in it. So this crust is gonna be really nice and textured. It's gonna be a little crumbly, it's gonna be crispy. Because it's gonna have a really nice creamy filling to go on top of it, I wanted to create that contrast. Everything is gonna to come together in this food processor starting with some raw almonds as the base. This is gonna give that really nice, crispy, crunchy element to the crust. Gonna to toss that in there. And now, to sweeten the crust up, we're gonna use some dates. I love dates, not the romantic kind, the medjool kind, okay? So we're gonna add these in. This gives a really nice caramel sweetness to the crust and also it's gonna allow it to be a little bit sticky and pliable so we can actually just stick it straight into our pan. And now we're gonna add a little bit of creamy almond butter. That's straight inside. You can also use a peanut butter if that's what you have on hand, totally fine with me. I won't judge you. A bit of melted and cooled coconut oil going in there as well. of vanilla extract and then I like to use a little pinch of salt this is gonna bring out that natural sweetness and create a bit of a contrast perfect I'm just gonna scrape down the sides just to make sure nobody is caught nobody is left behind and process it again Good. We want it to be crumbly, but there's also gonna be some of those pieces that remain. Now it's time to just pack it into our pan. Okay. Oh no. This is precious crust. 
precious cargo. We can't waste any of it. Now all I'm gonna do is just press it into my pan. Like this. And you wanna make sure it's evenly distributed throughout the entire pan, and you can kinda of see that it's sticking together as I tend to pack it. This is gonna serve as a really nice home for our creamy, luscious cheesecake filling. It's gonna be really happy sitting on top of here. We don't want the edges of this pan to feel unloved. We want the crust to be in there too, so make sure you get those corners as well. Okay. I think this looks pretty good if I ask myself. We're done packing the crust into the pan and now I'm gonna go grab the ingredients for our filling. The secret about this cheesecake filling is that it's actually made from cashews. They're super rich and buttery, so they're the perfect ingredient to make really creamy sauces and fillings like we're gonna do in this cheesecake. But to get it there, we need to first soak them. You always wanna make sure you're starting with raw cashews. These are completely raw and unsalted. And you can either soak them overnight if you have patience and time, or you can do what I did, flash soak them for one hour in hot water until they're nice and soft. You are not gonna believe how creamy this cheesecake filling is gonna be. We're starting with our raw and soaked cashews, going straight into our blender. Right in there. We're following it up with some coconut milk. I'm using full fat coconut milk here. We're not messing around with the low fat kind. Perfect for a really rich and creamy cheesecake filling. And I think this is a really great time to mention that this is a non-dairy recipe. I don't know if you've noticed, but all of you non-dairy folks out there, rejoice because this is for you. Time for our banana, our star. We rescued it from its fate in the trash, perhaps. All right, pop that straight in there. Just breaking it up so it's a bit easier to blend. And now we're gonna go in with our maple syrup. The ripe banana is really nice because it's super sweet already, but the maple syrup is just gonna pull it all together. I really like using maple syrup here because it's a really nice warm and golden contrast to those rich and creamy cashews. In there, and then a little touch of vanilla extract. Perfect. All right, we're gonna add some melted and cooled coconut oil. Just a touch. Now we're gonna add some lemon juice. This is super important because you've got rich ingredients like the cashews and the full fat coconut milk. So we want the lemon juice to give it that zing and really balance out those rich ingredients. I'm using this to catch the seeds. At home, you can even just put your fingers underneath the lemon and then catch the seeds in your hands. A little DIY. And then to balance everything out, balance that sweetness, bring it out a little bit, I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. Okay, now it's time to blend. Okay. 
okay. You just really cannot believe it. It's so smooth and so creamy. I wanna show you a little peek. Look at that. I'm gonna taste it a little and see if I think it needs anything. Taste a bit. I'm gonna add a little more lemon juice and a little more salt. You can totally adjust this to your liking. I just like a little more zing. And then that salt's gonna really bring out that sweetness. Okay, we're gonna blend again. Grab my fresh spoon and taste one more time. Perfect. All right, now it's time for this filling to find a home on top of our crust. And there's no dairy in this. Kinda crazy. I'm gonna grab my spatula. This is precious. I can't waste a bit. Now I'm just gonna make sure that's nice and smooth. You can even tap it a little bit to distribute it like this. Shake it around, make sure it hits all the edges. Now, I like to pretend I'm Picasso a little bit with the toppings. You can use whatever you'd like, but I'm gonna use some sliced almonds straight on top. Sprinkle them around. I'm gonna do a little bit of cinnamon. Okay, a little more. And finally, just a little pinch of flaky sea salt. Okay, don't be mad at me because now we have to wait a little bit. We're gonna put this in the freezer for five hours, but I promise you it is going to be worth it. Now I'm just gonna cover it with some plastic wrap so that it's protected and it goes into the freezer for its kind of long journey. And then it's ready. Patience is so worth it. I'm so excited about this. Just gonna remove my plastic wrap. Look at that. We almost don't deserve it. All right, this is why the parchment paper flaps are the best. We just lift it straight out of the pan like this. Now all I'm gonna do is slice them into little cheesecake bars. What you can also do is slice them into fingers as well if you want more of a bite-sized snack. I'm gonna go ahead for the full picture, the full bar. Look at this. I just have to show you. Can you believe that there's no dairy in this? It looks so creamy. All right, that's for me. This is my slice. I am so excited to dig into this. All right, here I go. It's simply not even fair. It's so creamy. It's such a great way to use the nearly perished banana that's been sitting on your counter. Creamy, you would never have any idea there wasn't any dairy in this. You know what? I really wish I could eat all of these myself, and I probably would, but I'm gonna be a little nice. I'm gonna send a picture to some friends and see if they wanna have some. Yes, they usually do. No one really ever says no. I mean, why would you? Wouldn't make sense, it's so good. I think I'm gonna deliver some to their houses. I'm such a good friend. Okay, Sue, guess what I brought you? <laughs> your favorite banana cream cheesecake. I made it for your birthday. Oh, this is my favorite, thank you. You're welcome. I did the same like date and almond crust that you like. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of does. Put your breakfast. Let's put a smoothie on top of it. 
to Dada's Eat. <laughs> to Dada's Eat. To Dada Eats. To Dada Eats squared. Dada Eats. Eh? <laughs> Dada Eats is... <laughs> We are back. I'm Anthony Contrino, and it is time to get saucy. We've got a brand new kitchen and new episodes coming your way this summer. Tune in to Today All Day, Mondays at 11 a.m. Well, hi there. Good to see you. Welcome to another uplifting episode of The Boost. We like to use our time here to highlight humanity at its very best. Our first story introduces us to a man who made the selfless decision to donate one of his organs, leading to a better life for his recipient and also himself. So the story is that two guys go into a bar and one guy comes out without a kidney. <laughs> the story begins here. Retirees Mark Scotch and his wife Lynn were on a road trip when they stopped at a bar in Louisiana. I started talking to a guy in, in the bar next to me basically and turned out to be Hugh Smith. They hit it off, but after a couple of hours, Hugh said he had to go. I said, I got to go home and do my dialysis treatment. And he looked at me, and I thought he was going to fall off the bar stool. After getting over his shock, Mark was quick to make an offer. He said, "I'm kidneys have failed, and I'm kind of looking for a kidney. And I said, I'll give you one of mine. Now, Hugh was shocked and admittedly skeptical. I never really expected to hear from Mark again. But Mark started researching how to become a donor and saw the need to act. I read that 13 people die every day in the United States waiting for a kidney transplant. Concerned his kidney would not match, Mark was excited to learn about a workaround, a voucher program through the National Kidney Registry. Mark's kidney would end up with the person who is the best match. In turn, Mark gives Hugh a voucher, which moves Hugh up the long wait list. In February of 2021, Hugh had his kidney transplant surgery. Eight weeks to the day, I was actually back on the golf course playing golf after my transplant. But the story doesn't end there. Mark's wife, Lynn, was with him during his evaluations to become a donor. I heard everything he was hearing, and I'm sitting in the room by myself thinking, I can't think of one good reason why I shouldn't look into this myself. This winter, just weeks from her own surgery, she was on Facebook when something caught her eye. Cooper's mom had created a, a catchy Facebook page called, I'm awesome, it's my kidneys that suck. Cooper Thompson had been on dialysis since he was just eight months old. He just had very small, underdeveloped kidneys with a lot of cysts. After several conversations, Lynn called saying she'd like to give Cooper her voucher. You know, you have a complete stranger telling you that they want to be a part of saving your child. So it was pretty special. For Lynn, it was a full circle moment. Cooper wasn't that much older than our son when we lost him many years ago. On March 2nd, Cooper had his surgery. I mean, it gives Cooper a chance at uh, having a normal childhood as best as he can. We're super humbled. Uh, these people came out of nowhere and, you know, like Katie said, saved our child. Mark and Lynn now not just saving lives, they're also bringing awareness to the shortfall of donors, with Mark biking across the country on what he calls an organ trail. The couple finding a new mission after a couple of beers. <laughs> oh, we are so honored to have Mark and Lynn with us this <laughs> wow. morning. Who would have thought like a, a basic visit to a bar was mm -hmm. going to turn into this? And it, it seems like you guys didn't really hesitate. It came, it just came right out. Well, the main reason is, is because my sister-in-law, Jody Lang, had donated 12 years previous. So I knew you could donate, but I had never, ever thought about it once mm -hmm. or considered it for myself. Mm -hmm. I just... It was just there. Hugh was saying that he was on the golf course and enjoying his life. Well, we just thought that he might want to come and say hello. Oh, no. So, uh, <laughs> Hugh, will you come out and say hello to Mark and Lynn? Where is come Hugh? He's traveling, too. Come on, Hugh. Come on, come Hugh. On, Hugh. Oh. oh. That's a surprise. <laughs> hello, buddy. Come on out here. <laughs> I don't. Hey, this brother. This is awesome. Hello, buddy. <laughs> 
We've done this before. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> Hugh, why don't you come right here and on. sit right here. Mark, why don't you oh. sit in your seat and we'll have, yeah, <laughs> that's good. You've met before, but yes. you Hello, have a darling. seat. How are you? How are you? Oh, oh, good I on cannot you. believe that I am sitting here with you guys Oh, today. my gosh. We are so <laughs> delighted to have you. I mean, can you, I mean, just the fact that you have an, a, a, a casual conversation at yeah. a bar and someone says, I'm not going to forget it. In fact, I'm going to stay in touch. And hey, by the way, I donated a kidney for you. I mean, what does that do for your your heart, your soul, not just your kidneys, for everything? Honestly, um, you know, it, it was all surreal. I mean, I, I really couldn't believe that it was happening. Wow. So, uh, you know, what Mark did <laughs> made me certainly believe that there is such things as God sins, mm. and oh. He is definitely mine. Well, oh. <laughs> well, you know, Lynn, you're also a godsend. Have you ever met Cooper? No. Um, we had left Wisconsin on the latest uh, kidney awareness bike ride before his surgery. Well, hold on a second, my darling girl. Oh, geez. <laughs> Guess who came to see you? Oh, no. Cooper, Cooper and, here and his mom, mom and dad. And dad. Come oh, on. My. Oh. <laughs> Did you know this was going on? <laughs> I can't see. Katie. Oh. Eric. Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome. Oh. Super duper Cooper. <laughs> Have a seat, everybody. Come on, everybody. Come on we got the extra we'll super sized couch. Let's all scooch oh down and have amazing. our seat with everybody. Yeah, it's, come on, it's crazy. You know, Lynn. Come on down, Hugh. Come, come, come on down, us. Hugh. Everybody <laughs> snuggle in. All right. We're family, we aren't we? We're family, family now. Have a seat. Oh, have a seat. Oh, Look at this knuckles? baby. Oh, good job. <laughs> Uh, oh Lynn, my! One of the reasons why you wanted to donate to a little one yeah. is because you lost your own yeah. son tragically yeah. when he was just about mm -hmm. Cooper's age. Yeah. Yes. And here he is. What does it mean to give life to another little boy? It's really full circle for me, and uh, <laughs> I say it's redemptive healing. Redemptive. Because healing. I carried that stone of regret that we were never able to donate his organs mm. um, at the time, and so this that regret is gone. Wow. Katie, Eric, what does it mean to you to be sitting with Lynn right now with your little boy? It's, it's wild. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Um, you know, obviously we're so happy to be here and thank them in person and meet them um, and share Cooper's story. Um, How is Cooper doing? Tell us about he's him. He's doing great. Yeah. Um, after surgeries, a few rough days, but yeah. overall he bounced back quickly and uh, we've noticed a lot of changes, more energy, more active, um, more smiles. You can tell he's feeling a lot better. So oh, what a Get back to being a normal two-year-old. <laughs> he a was given a second chance at life. Oh, wow. Thanks to <laughs> Lynn and his donor, Allie, back home. Yes. And, you know, there are so many people who think, I can't do anything. Yeah. Like, most of us haven't done what you guys have done. Do you oh, have any God. advice for people at home saying, I wonder if this is something for me? Do what we've been saying for two years. If you're curious, just get evaluated. You don't know until you're tested. And once you're tested and you're deemed healthy enough, then you can make a decision to move forward. Now to another story about what happens when people pay it forward over and over again until that first good deed comes back all the way around. It happened recently with a chain of 12 kidney donors and recipients. Kate Snow has their inspiring story. It all started with a visually striking billboard in Virginia, an artist in search of a kidney donor. I saw it twice, you know, maybe it means something that I saw it a second time. Innova Health had already found a donor for the woman on the billboard, but 25-year-old Garrett Canning decided to still give a kidney. That started a chain that would pass through six states across the eastern U.S. The first recipient, a 32-year-old woman at Vanderbilt in Tennessee. Her friend, a mom of six, sent her kidney to Jason Gentry in Lansing, Michigan. We gathered most of the participants together on a Zoom. So I, because of Garrett seeing that billboard, Jason, you have a kidney now. I received an awesome gift. Yeah, thank you. Jason had been struggling to find the energy to go fishing with his son, exhausted after teaching second graders all day. Not anymore. A friend of mine has referred to my kidney as the Incredible Hulk kidney. How long had you been on the list waiting? It would have been four years in November. Wow. It's been just amazing how great I feel. Lisa Klaus had heard about Jason in her church newsletter. When she wasn't a match for him, she had agreed to help form a chain. Whatever we need to do, let's do this. So you gave your kidney to Brian at Wake Forest. Have you met Brian yet? I have not. Hey, Brian. Hi, hey, Brian. Hey. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm great. 
Bless you. Thank you so much. It's a oh, pleasure absolutely. to meet you. I'm so happy that so many people were helped out, but I cannot explain what a blessing this has been for me. I've been waiting to see what my angel looks like, and so it's, uh, <laughs> it's an honor to, to finally see you. Brian Holloway's church friend in North Carolina, a father of three, donated to Kathy Soders in Ohio, her third transplant. How are you doing? I'm doing great, actually. Uh, fabulous. I can't believe how great I feel. A huge change from last year when Kathy's husband had posted a plea for a donor on Facebook. Jennifer, you saw it on Facebook. Tell me what happened inside you. Um, it really wasn't even a choice for me. I'm sorry, I'm getting all <laughs> emotional already. <laughs> emotional. Um, <laughs> it really wasn't even a choice. I read, I probably didn't even get through half the post and I was already on the phone to my Uncle Matt. I just told Aunt Kathy, I said, whatever we need to do, we'll do it. Jennifer Abel didn't match her aunt, but she could donate to a man in New Jersey, prompting a New Jersey donor to complete the chain, sending Hung Dao a kidney, a patient at Inova in Virginia, where all of this started. Never stop waiting and still live positive and you're going to get a gift one day real soon like me. That's beautiful. You're saying never give up hope. I want to say to all of the donors, because all of you made, made this happen for each of us, not just one of you, all of you. This chain would not exist without you. So thank you. And thank you is way too small of a word. People like Lisa are just awesome because she didn't know who I was. She didn't know who I voted for. She doesn't know what my beliefs are. She just wanted to be able to change somebody's life. For the donors, it's been life changing, too. You just get to a point in your life where you realize that you see the bigger picture. Jason, you said this gives you faith, this chain. Yeah, it, it does. You know, it, it gives me faith in just humankind. After the break, some handy tools for success, breaking down stereotypes and building community. Stay with us. Back to the boost, there is a library in Seattle where the shelves are not filled with books and every single member has a real do-it-yourself mentality. Check it out. Craft supplies, sewing machine, uh, paint supplies, gear, sanders. Welcome to the Northeast Seattle Tool Library. It's a lending library of some 8,000 tools from automotive to landscaping to hand and power tools of every sort. Josh Epstein is a full-time coordinator here. A tool library is a place where people can come and get tools. And they borrow them just like a book library, bring them back when they're done. Yeah. Sweet. Thank Have a good day. You too. Like many of its 2,000 members, Josh first found the tool library because of a home renovation project he needed some help with. I was converting my garage into living space and needed scaffolding, like huge scaffolding, which could be thousands of dollars if you're even just renting it, let alone buying it. And they had 20 foot scaffolding here. And I was just amazed. Got all that and was able to convert this garage, learning mostly from YouTube and some friends. That kind of do it yourself attitude is at the core of this community. Maya Altshuler, now a sophomore at Smith College, 
has been in the process of converting an old school bus into a tiny home with a whole lot of help from the tool library. It's fun to say that my first car is a bus. We stripped out all the seats, replaced the flooring, put in cabinets. It would be really cool to get it to a place where I could potentially live in it full time if I wanted to. Pick a board, cut a 90 and a 45. I want to empower somebody to do something they never thought they could do. Did you feel okay? Yeah, I did. Okay. Members also have access to a wood shop where Trisha Sillis is a shop steward. She's one of the 100 volunteers that keep this community space going strong. And she's looking to break stereotypes about who works with tools. Members do look at me for advice. They don't look past me for the advice. They actually engage me. And being dismissed as that older woman who probably doesn't know, uh, it's not true. <laughs> There are about 50 independent tool libraries like this one spread throughout the country with different membership models. At this Seattle library, they have an optional yearly donation, but membership is free and open to all. A surprising number of them are in very good condition. Recycling and reuse are at the core of what tool libraries do. Carl Coney is one of the many volunteer repair people on site tasked with keeping the tools in rotation for as long as possible. I've always prided myself on fixing things rather than replacing them. Everybody doesn't need to have a pressure washer if they only use it four times a year. Uh, so having a place where they can just come in and then take whatever they want for their project, uh, that makes real environmental sense. It's a lot of stuff that doesn't have to be manufactured and then disposed of. We know that there's environmental problems going on right now. We know that communities are getting less connected and we know that people are needing to save money right now and so we're doing all those things. This is a movement that is really actually building a lot of momentum right now. We're getting this done and talking about the future of how we want to grow and change the world through the tool libraries. To another organization now with some handy tricks for building self-confidence. It's a shop class like you've never seen before. This one just for girls. Wait till it stops. High five, that was awesome. Welcome to Girls Garage in Berkeley, California, where young girls are learning how to use some seriously big power tools. Leave it down till it stops. Woo, nice wow. job. What was important to you about founding a place that was just for girls? I think there are not enough places in the world where girls feel both safe and empowered to be brave, where there's a true community of girls and women um, that come together and say, this is our place, we're gonna do this thing, and it's gonna be awesome. Emily Pilaton fell in love with building when she was a teenager. She grew up to be an architect with a passion for encouraging other girls to pursue design, which led her to launch the garage. When did you create this space? So Girls Garage started in 2013 as an experiment. It was a summer camp that I ran for two weeks and it sold out in a matter of days. After the success of that trial run, Emily knew she was onto something. So that told me, A, I wasn't crazy. B, there were other girls like me and young girls who wanted to do this, this thing. It really blew my mind, like how much energy and excitement they brought to it and how energized I was about being in a community of just girls. Soon, Girls Garage became her full-time job. The program teaches construction basics to girls ages 9 through 17, and even has a special workshop for girls to build and bond with their moms. Why do you think the moms were so eager to get involved? There is a generation of moms who will come in and say, you know, I wanted to take shop class in high school, but I couldn't because it was only for boys. For some moms, there's a little bit of, you know what, I'm gonna learn this now, and I'm gonna do it with my daughter. I joined one of Emily's recent sessions where mothers and daughters learn to construct a toolbox using drills, drivers, jigsaws, bandsaws, and more. If I put my blade on the side I measured, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be too short. It's gonna be too short, yeah. Is it cool to see your daughter holding like big power tools? I love it. And it's just seeing how, um, how happy and confident she is doing it. Are you proud of yourself? Yeah. I think that I did a pretty good job. Emily's own mom even took in her first official class at the garage. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> so good. 
Well, it's inspiring, and I wish all students, but particularly young girls, have a chance to, to do this kind of work. Girls Garage has now taught over 400 girls and has a wait list of 200 more. But for Emily, it's about more than just knowing how to use the tools. It's also about realizing your own potential. I love teaching girls about tools. Their entire demeanor changes. They stand taller. You go from, oh, I'm this nine-year-old girl to, oh my god, I'm a nine-year-old girl who knows how to build. And that just completely changes the way you think about what you're capable of. You're really changing these girls' lives. I, I think so. I hope so. And I think also this is a place that I know I needed when I was a kid. I wish that this place existed when I was a kid. Um, so I'm definitely living vicariously through my girls and it's the construction crew I always wanted to have. We are back on The Boost with a story that'll make you feel good today. A surprise reunion between two friends. Our viewer, Deborah Rushing, wrote us to honor her friend, Helen Boyd. But here's the twist. They've only met one time in person before. Let's take a look at their story. I wrote into the show to honor my good friend and mentor, Helen Boyd. Eight years ago, I was downtown at Forsyth Park. That morning was a very difficult morning for me. I was in a relationship that was truly not healthy. I left the house and I took a seat on the bench. I was very troubled by what had taken place in my life and the situation that I was involved in. I was at a very low, low point. I felt like I just was lost and I needed help. When I'm sitting on that bench, and as I looked up, I saw Miss Helen standing in front of the fountain in front of me, looking at me. I knew that from the moment I looked at her that there was something very special about her. There was just no way somebody could appear just dropping out the sky in front of me like that. She walked over, she gave me a hug. I needed that hug. I hadn't had a hug in a long time. She took time, an hour and a half, to sit with me on a bench and listen to me talk. I thought, how could God send me somebody so wonderful in a time of need? When Helen walked away, I felt like a brand new person. I felt a hundred pounds lighter. I changed my relationship. I moved. Things were still hard. I had to start all over and not knowing what you were going to do, where you were going and how things were gonna work out. I have come a very long way since that day eight years ago. I am happy, I'm peaceful, and I'm joyful. 
I've only met Helen one time and that was in the park. So we have just maintained and built this relationship over the telephone. Now, more than anything, I want to see her face to face so that I can thank her and see her and just hug her and let her know how much I love her and grateful that she is in my life. I am uh, just so excited. It's all I can do to contain myself and I can't wait to share my joy. Yes! All Helen. right, Helen, come, come on out! out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tim! Oh, my God! Oh, look at you! Oh, look at you! Oh, my God! You are real. You're not just my angel. Oh, my God, I'm so glad to see you. I want a uh, Helen hug. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, oh hi, Helen. Oh, oh this is so good. <laughs> Come sit I'll next sit to me, Deborah. Oh my, oh, my gosh. Wow. wow. Okay, so oh. you probably realize you're not here to talk about candles. <laughs> <laughs> but what does it feel like to see oh, each no other again? Oh, my God. You know, it's a blessing. Um... That day when I saw her, because I was with a friend that was doing, um, she's, she sings gospel songs, and she was wanting to do a photo shoot out there at the park. And then I told her, hold on a minute, and she went on, and then I said, I see this woman over there. I said, I got to go to her. And I just came up on her. She didn't, she didn't know where I came from. And I seen that she was just in the, just really the strain of just yeah. something was going on with her. And I just told her, it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you know, I'm a friend, and I can help you do this. <laughs> Even though I'm from Atlanta and she's in Savannah, mm -hmm. I'm going to take your number. Uh -huh. And for all these years, yeah. I've been coaching and mm -hmm. talking to her, inspiring her, and she looks, oh, Dab looks so great now. I mean, oh my God. her story, but it's, it's a movement. And she needed someone to come into her life at that time. And I was placed there at that time. Oh, wow. Deborah. What about for you? <laughs> yeah, you finally have your moment eight years waiting. I know you've been wanting this. Yeah. It has. It's all I wanted to do was to look her in the <laughs> eyes and to hold her hand and give her the biggest hug and thank you for the bottom of my soul for I know. Mm. You have taught me so much about positivity and how we can go along, how faith we can grow it. And we've got to give thanks to God mm -hmm. because she was. She was my angel sent to me. Stick around. We've got a must-see feel-good video for you right after this. the boost it is our favorite time of the day when we give you that one final feel-good video to give you good vibes all day long 
when you're learning how to play a sport, no matter what your age, the most important thing to do is listen to your parents and coaches and do exactly what they say. <laughs> or so we thought. <laughs> Keep your eye on the ball. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I am the ball. Oh. Oh. There you go. Oh. There you go, oh. buddy. Oh. Like now, it. that's like the old <laughs> address the ball. The, hello, hello, ball. ball. <laughs> did it, too. <laughs> the slugger actually cracked up after oh. this, Didn't understand what was so funny, but wow. Oh, what a beautiful show we had here today. We're so grateful that we were able to share these heartfelt stories with you. We like to do it every single day. We'll see you next time right here on Today All Day. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm fashion and beauty expert Makon Jovo, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. This is Shop All Day, Ready, Set, Summer. Hi, I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. Now today, we're bringing you sunshine and all things summer style, from matching swimsuits for the entire family, including the towel, to all of this season's sandal trends. And don't forget beauty and accessories for the warmer weather. We've got you covered. And remember, see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can even text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. First, let's talk bathing suits and newsflash, like many of you out there, I love, love, love a matching set. You can imagine my joy when I discovered these bold and coordinating beach towels from Old Navy with bathing suits to match. Oh my gosh, that would have been enough to make my entire week. But then as I scroll down the page, I almost lost it. Turns out that there's even more matching to be had. Not only can you match your bathing suit to your towel, you can also match your bathing suit with your entire family. Yes, there are matching bathing suit styles for women, men, boys and girls, and they are really, really adorable. How fun are these prints? Pink flamingos, bold sunflowers. I love the yellow and black and the towels. It's so chic. And the matching trend is really big. And I think this would make such a cute family photo up and also, a really cute idea for couples too. Next up, say hello to one of my favorite sporty trends of the season. Ta-da, it's the tennis court. Yes, tennis court slash all things tennis is shaping up to be one of the top trends of the summer. The beauty of the skirt, as you are likely aware, is that it is a skirt short hybrid. So it's a skirt with a built-in biking short underneath, which makes it an excellent option for any outdoor activity. But here's the thing, especially with this black one, we're seeing women wear their skirts not just for sporty endeavors, but pretty much everywhere. From shopping to lunch to lounging around the house. And how cute is this little skirt. This is a really flattering silhouette. It's got a high waist, which is elastic. And check this out. I mean, loving, loving, loving the little pleating. And look at the shorts underneath. It's got two pockets here. And it's also got a little hidden zipper pocket in the waistband. And the brand says it's made out of a really light and breathable poly spandex blend with a little compression. So who doesn't love that, right? And it comes in 20 fun colors. So game, set, and match. This sporty skirt is a real winner. Moving on to one of my favorite accessories for summer, the straw bag. Yes, natural woven bags are one of the 
hottest accessory trends of the season. And I really, really love this stylish bag from Amazon. It's an affordable take on the trend, and it's made of rattan, which is a palm vine that it's been hand-woven in this really beautiful herringbone pattern. Plus, straw is the perfect summer neutral. You really can wear it with anything. And I love how versatile these little bags are. You can take it from the beach to brunch and beyond. It's big enough to carry your essentials, your wallet, sunglasses, computer, towels, you name it. And I love this pom-pom detail. And it even has a removable tassel. So this bag is gonna take you anywhere you need to go this summer in style. And if you were curious about what shoes I'll be wearing all summer, then look no further than these two bestsellers. They're part of a big trend out there called recovery slides, which are sandals originally designed to help you recover after workouts. But they're also part of another less scientific trend called the squishy sandal trend. But regardless of what trend you assign them to, the bottom line is they are so comfy that you are never going to want to take them off your feet. I was introduced to this first pair from a brand called Ufos because my 10-year-old niece had them and she let me try them on. And that was it. I have been obsessed ever since. They are absolute comfort. And what makes them so dreamy is the foam technology. It feels like a thick arch supporting foam platform that the brand says absorbs more impact than traditional footwear. And according to the brand, the footbed is designed to reduce stress on knees, ankles, and other joints. And now for another fashion forward and affordable take on the recovery slide, we've also got a version of the squishy recovery sandal from Amazon. And shoppers call these cloud slides and they live up to their name. I have a pair of these and you feel like you are walking on a fluffy cloud. So you can wear these everywhere from the beach to the pool to the gym, running around the house, running around town, or you can really just wear them anytime you wanna make your feet happy. And I love all the colors. There's a great selection of both neutrals and brights, but I say go with the brights this summer. So next, let's talk about another slide trend that you are going to want to know about this summer, the braided slide. Yes, this trend might just be one of the biggest of the season, and you're gonna see this braided design detail pretty much everywhere. And these little takes from Nordstrom are an excellent example of the trend. I mean, they've got that great oversized braided strap, and it's actually padded, so it really makes a statement. Plus. These slides are no shrinking wallflowers. I love how they look on the foot. They've also got great details like the square toe silhouette, which we're also seeing everywhere. And they come in great neutrals, but I'm also really loving these new neutrals. Pastel yellow and purple are in my view, the new neutrals of the summer. And surprisingly, they really do go with so much. So for the price, there is no better option for a wear anywhere on trend slide. And these really look expensive to me. Now, summer means sunshine and a perfect excuse for new sunnies. And I have one word for this pair, chic. And these I think are beautiful. Check out the tortoise detail. Tortoise is a really big trend we're seeing out there this summer, as well as the oversized retro look. I've got to tell you, this fabulous oversized shape really does look great on pretty much every face shape. And I think they look really expensive. And my favorite thing about this brand is that every time I wear these, someone asks me if they're by a high-end designer. And I say, no, they're not. You can have them too for under $30. And last but not least, I have been trying to get this set of resin acrylic cocktail rings into an episode for months. In fact, I brought mine from home. I'm wearing one right now. <laughs> and big chunky acrylic or resin rings are a massive trend. And we've seen some very expensive offerings from major designers. So I was thrilled to find this set of five for such an affordable price. And what I think is so fun about a cocktail ring is they're sort of a statement look, right? But they're made out of acrylic or resin and they come in so many fun colors. I'm constantly wearing the clear or the black, but I can't wait to try out the white, 
or the bright green this summer. I think they're gonna be so much fun. So let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the Old Navy beach towel and matching bathing suits, the pleated tennis skirt, the rattan bag with pom-poms, the recovery slides, the Luca Slide Sandal, the Peepers Tokyo Square tortoiseshell sunglasses, and the resin cocktail rings. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, McCohen Lovu is talking to Florida Maria Rivera, who went from TV reporter to shoe designer. She'll walk us through more of this summer's shoe trends. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. Summer is finally here, and warmer weather brings new styles. And I'm excited because we have TV reporter turned entrepreneur Flor de Maria Rivera, who has her own shoe line. How fun is that to design shoes for a living? I love it. She's here with her favorite trends for this summer. Hi, Flor. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you, Mako. <laughs> Wow, you're so talented. I mean, that goes Aww. without saying, but your shoes are some of the, no lie, some of the most beautiful shoes I've seen. Like, really? Oh. Right no, you're going to make me cry before. <laughs> I still get so emotional over my shoes because it's been such a long journey, you know, to get to where I am. But I feel so blessed because so many celebrities have worn it and I'm self-funded and I've switched careers so many times in my life. and. I mean, I'm 46, so people oh. told me I was crazy to start the line in my 40s, but I'd never listened to anybody. You're doing it. You look amazing. Oh. The shoes are amazing. I've been in shoe heaven with my own shoes for the past two and a half years, so it just, sometimes it just it still feels like a dream. Yeah, what a wonderful dream to be in. So let's talk about your pivot, because I think your story is so interesting. You're a sports anchor, and then you decided to design your own shoe collection. Do you remember 
the exact moment that you decided you want to go down that path? I've always wanted to do it, but I just felt like I was never ready. And then one day I was actually at a lake. I was reading a book and something in that book told me this is the moment. And that's when I say, I am finally doing my shoe line. I am never going to be ready. And this is just the time. And that was summer of 2000. 17 and here we are <laughs> and here you are thriving and shining walk me through your inspiration right when you're designing the shoe do you get the idea in your head first or do you just kind of like jot it out as you go along that's an amazing question because there's so many different ways like the first season i actually had a mood board and my first collection was inspired by peru that's where i'm from that's where i was born and those are my roots but then later when the pandemic happened i just found myself not traveling as much and i found myself at home honestly if you walk into my house you'll find a little notebook in every little corner, sometimes I have ideas and I just start sketching away. And lately, I think that's what's happened. I don't even look at the mood board that I have. Inspiration just happened. The other day I was watching a movie and I thought of something and I think, Mako, it's going to be my hottest sandal yet. <laughs> oh, your hottest sandal. I don't know how you can pop this because this is a big thing. So the theme of the show is Ready, Set, Summer. And I'm just curious to know, like, what are some of the themes that we can expect to see or some of the trends that we can expect to see in the summer? As far as shoes goes, lace-ups. Lace-ups have been everywhere on the runways. You see one of my favorite styles. It was named after my grandma, Raquel. This is a nude color, and it pretty much goes with everything. And when I'm talking about lace-ups, this one can tie around the ankles, or it can also tie all the way up to your knees. Uh, so that's one choice. But then also I'm talking about lace-ups in the way that it's just a sexy estiletto that just wraps around the ankles. So that's one of the biggest trends uh, this season. Also so, Michael, I know you loved it, and it's this bold color right here. Uh -huh. <laughs> The neon. Neons are huge in the summer. I love the neon, but I also <laughs> love these as well. Can you tell me what inspired the collection? That one has a mixture of silk satin, it's got crystals, and it also got pony hair. But then you usually are used to leopard in the brown and black shades, but I love going all out. I love a showstopper shoe, and that one is yellow with black leopard. I mean, I wish you guys could see the detail on this shoe, the straps. I mean, it's just so absolutely beautiful how does it make you feel seeing celebrities wear your shoes because you were telling me earlier that you started you know later on in life in terms of designing shoes what does it make you feel like when you see celebrities rocking your shoes uh, sometimes I honestly still can't believe it and lately I just get so teary-eyed because it's not only about this moment but for me it's always been following my dreams especially my parents moved from Peru left everything behind to give us a better life and I want to honor that and I want to make them proud so for me it takes me back on time and all the sacrifices my parents have to do and also as a Latina as a woman as a minority as a woman of color I hope and, and pray that I can open doors for those that come behind me or those that come alongside with me oh my gosh how inspiring i know your parents your community mm -hmm. everyone is so proud of you all right the theme again is ready set summer so let's talk about sunglasses these are so stylish right i love that they come in a bunch of different colorways but they also have important functions can you tell me about them yes so a sporting sunglasses Ooh, my god they look so good on you <laughs> thank you flor thank you sporty sunglasses are one of the hottest trends that we've seen on the runway. The reason why I love this one, do you like this one, Michael? I love the white, first of all. I love the pop of color. They look great on you. And don't they feel great too? Oh my God, they feel so lightweight. And the best thing is that they cost less than $25. So it is amazing. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars to look good. So this is more of an angular style that it's also a hot trend. But if you notice, these ones are blue with the white. They can also come with different color lenses. So it just depends what you like. And if you're like me, I will rock this with something neon. <laughs> but it's also, if you're a minimalist, you can wear this with more of a neutral outfit and you can let the, the sunglasses stand out. Speaking of accessories doing the talking, let's move on to this necklace. This necklace, Flora, just screams summer to me. How do you style it though? Do you wear it with like neutrals or you do pops of color? 
This is just beautiful pastel colors. So if you want to pick one of these colors, let's say the yellow or the coral, you can pick a dress or a top or anything that has one of those colors and you're set. And what I love about this necklace, it's a Y2K trend that has come back. It's all over our closet and now it's taking on to jewelry. So it's supposed to be a hottest trend for the summer as well. We saw it on the runway. This is a winning, winning necklace. Speaking of winning, uh, and TikTok trends. I've seen gua sha tools all over my social media, but Flora, tell me, what are the benefits of using gua sha? You know, I swear by this little stone, even though when beauty gadgets we have become so popular and some of them can cost hundreds of dollars, do you gua sha, Michael? You look like I you do. do. I do, I actually do. And I like that it like wakes up my face, especially when I wake up in the morning, right? So I usually do it in the morning. <laughs> I do it, don't forget about the neck. So I love to apply a little bit of oil Right? And then you just start on the neck, move upwards, Michael, right? I love this round one. And then like you did it before, I love to go around my jawline after the neck. And I just, when I get to the end, see, I just stay there. I do it at least five times in one section, and then you work your way up. And there's so many videos if you want to learn nowadays, and I love like the one that you have, the rose quartz, but don't worry about trying different ones. The stone doesn't really matter. There's a J and there's different ones. This one I just love because it pinks, it looks pretty in the vanity. It's so pretty. Isn't it so, it's so pretty? so relaxing too. Like as we were trying yes. it, I instantly felt like, oh my God, imagine coming home after a long day, instant relaxation. So Flora, I love that you brought the self tanner. Tell me how it's different from the other ones that are on the market. Yes, that's a saint one. I tried different one, but I think that one has become my favorite because not only it dries fast, but it just gives you the perfect golden tone. It's not too light, it's not too dark, but if you're trying a bronzer, make sure you use a glove because if you get it in your hand, sometimes they turn orange and it can be, yes, Michael, see, you know, you know. <laughs> it can turn, your hand can turn orange and trust me, it can take days to get that, rid of that. But I think that's a perfect one, you know, to just get your natural glow, like you just came back from vacation without having to go, you know, get a, a spray tan that those can be really expensive sometimes, or you don't, you know, you're not at the beach or you, you want to take care of your skin. I think that's always a, a great option. That's such a great point. Well, Flora, we are ready for summer. Thank you for stopping by <laughs> and giving us all these great selections. Have a great summer, okay? Thank you. Now let's run through all the products one more time. The Flor de Maria sandals, the sporty sunglasses, the multicolored necklace, the gua sha tool, and the Centro Pay self tan bronzing mousse. And just so you know, Flor de Maria once worked for Telemundo, which is part of our parent company, NBC Universal. Up next, Adriana Brock continues to soak in the sun with everything from accessories to keep you cool to solutions for slicing all that summer fruit. Don't go away.
everyone, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock and now that summer is finally here, it is time to slip on your sandals and get ready for the pool and beach season. I cannot wait to show you my editor's picks. From accessories to keep you looking and feeling cool in the warmer weather, to hacks for cutting all that delicious summer fruit we love. And remember, see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. So speaking of cute summer accessories, let's discuss this hat. It is the number one best-selling hat on Amazon and has over 25,000 reviews. So what makes it so great? Not only is this a great looking hat that can go with any summer outfit, according to the brand, it is also basically crush proof because it is designed to fold up and roll up easily so that you can toss it in your purse or your suitcase all summer long. If hats aren't for you, let's talk hair. In the summer, when the heat is on the rise, we all love to throw our hair into a ponytail to keep cool. So this set is going to be an essential for you. It comes in a set of 12 scrunchies for an incredibly affordable price. You get a ton of prints from florals, polka dots, even classic stripes so that you can match all of your summer outfits. And not only do they come in fun prints to match any outfit, but they have a cute scarf detailing attached to them to give your hairstyle a stylish little flair. Moving on to another accessory I'm a personal fan of, if I could only wear one pair of sandals all summer long, it would be the classic Birkenstock sandal. These are the brand's best-selling two-strap Arizona style. The brand says that this version is actually waterproof thanks to this rubber-like texture, which makes them incredibly lightweight. And they're perfect for all of those summer vacations, trips to the pool and the beach, or just a chill weekend in the backyard. Either way, you're still gonna get the support and comfort of a Birkenstock sandal with an adjustable buckle, and you can choose from a ton of different bright colors to jazz up any outfit. And with summer right around the corner, now is the perfect time to check those sunscreen expiration dates. You're gonna wanna stock up on new ones for those sunny days ahead. Today.com actually spoke with a dermatologist who recommends this very product. It also happens to be a favorite among the team. It's the CeraVe SPF 30 facial sunscreen that offers protection and doubles as a moisturizer, so there's no excuse not to use it daily. So we've covered style and your skin. Let's talk about the ultimate outdoor blanket because it is so large. It can fit up to three to five adults and you could use it anywhere from the beach to the park, even camping because according to the brand, it is waterproof and sandproof. It also weighs less than one pound and easily folds right back up into a carrying case that it comes with. And once you fold it up, it's about the size of a tablet, pretty small so you can pop it in your bag for on the go use. Plus, with all these bright colors to choose from, it's gonna be so easy to spot your crew from the beach. And it comes with four little anchors to keep home base in place. Speaking of home base, we found three incredible kitchen tools you're gonna wanna pick up if you're entertaining this summer. First, a handheld slicer that makes prepping some of the toughest fruit a lot easier. I'm talking about watermelons, honeydew, and cantaloupe. It has a large round design with these sturdy handles that's gonna do all the heavy slicing for you. And we can't get over how this gadget is big enough for an average sized watermelon. The trick is to cut your melon in half before you slice it to make it a little bit easier to slice up. If you're more of a pineapple lover, the stainless steel tool cuts perfect slices and does all the heavy lifting by removing the core for you. All you have to do is cut off the top of the pineapple, push down and twist all the way to the bottom to get those perfect slices. Once the core is pulled out, you can also use your now hollow pineapple for some festive drinks. Lastly, the strawberry slicer really cuts down on prep time, which is a game changer when you're hosting or you have hungry kids to feed. This little gadget is going to save so much time and you keep all your knives in the kitchen drawers. All you have to do is place the fruit inside of the gadget, give it a squeeze, and you're gonna get the perfect slices every time. It's actually designed for strawberries, but you can use it for grapes and other small fruits too. Let's run through the products one more time. The roll-up straw hat, the 12-piece scrunchie set, the Birkenstock Eva sandal, the CeraVe moisturizer with SPF 30, the beach blanket, the watermelon slicer, the pineapple core, and the strawberry slicer. 
And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on editors' picks and for our show. It's been so much fun showing you all of our summer favorites. Tune in next week for an all new episode of Shop All Day. Thanks for watching. We are cooking up some exciting things this week in the brand new Today All Day Kitchen. Up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada <laughs> will show you how to rescue any brown spotty bananas with two tasty treats, chocolate chip banana bread bars and a banana cream cheesecake that just happens to be dairy free. Welcome to Hashtag Cooking. The next time you see some nearly perished, super ripe banana sitting on your counter, wondering what will become of their existence, like will we get thrown away today? Don't toss them, please save them. Rescue the spotty bananas, hashtag save the spotty bananas, and make these recipes. I'm gonna show you two of my favorite ways to use those super ripe bananas sitting on your counter. My chocolate chip banana bread bars, and my banana cream cheesecake that happens to be dairy free. Let's get Hashtag Cooking. Just for one second, okay, I want you to forget about those microwave packets of oatmeal. And we're gonna give oatmeal a glamorous moment with these chocolate chip banana bread bars. I've already preheated my oven to 375 degrees, and now all I'm going to do is prepare my pan. So what I've done here, greased it with some coconut oil so our parchment paper doesn't stick, right? So I've got that here. I'm just gonna stick it right into the pan. The coconut oil helps it stick, right? So this is nice. Make sure we're hitting all of the edges of the pan. And what's nice is that we're creating these flaps, okay? The flaps are really nice because when it's done baking, we'll be able to easily lift the batter out of the pan and have our bars all ready. What's great about using super ripe bananas in recipes is that they're naturally a lot sweeter and a lot easier to mash into different recipes. Got two here. We're rescuing them. We're giving them a second life, a second chance at life. They love us for this. Throwing the peels away. Gonna peel this one like so, pop that in, see you later. Okay, and now we're just gonna mash. This is kind of where you can get your aggression of the day out <laughs> into these bananas, okay? I wanna mash them until they're really nice and smooth. And like I said, because they're a bit riper, it's gonna be a lot softer and easier to mash. Not to mention it's gonna impart a lot of that really nice, sweet, ripe flavor of the bananas into this oatmeal bar recipe. And because they're super ripe, we're actually not gonna use a bunch of sugar to sweeten this recipe because it's gonna pull a lot of that natural sweetness from the bananas. Have I convinced you to not throw your bananas away yet? Just wondering. Okay. Really take your time here, <laughs> like I am. Okay. I want no banana to feel unmashed. I want it to feel all loved and mashed, <laughs> okay? All right. And you can use a potato masher here if you have that, if you like that utensil for your life. I'm just using a fork because you know what? Forks are accessible. Okay. So this is looking pretty good. I have to compliment myself on my mashing abilities. Looks pretty smooth. And now we're just gonna work on the rest of our ingredients. All right, so in this recipe, I'm using two eggs, so I'm gonna crack those both in here. I wanna be that type of person that does like the one-handed egg crack. I'm not, I'm not that person. I'm safe, <laughs> I take precautions. <laughs> All right, okay, now I'm gonna whisk the eggs and the bananas together. So everything is nice and smooth. Look at those amber yolks. It's pretty nice. Bananas and eggs, 
whisk together. They look nice and smooth, really happy in there. Now I'm gonna add my nut butter. So I'm actually using peanut butter here, but if you have a cashew butter at home, if you have an almond butter, that's totally fine. You do you. Whatever nut butter is you're harboring in your pantry, I know I have like a million because I have a problem, uh, but you can use that. I'm gonna slide that straight in there. Now I'm gonna mix that in. All right, and then I'm gonna add my melted and cooled coconut oil, my vanilla extract, and if you haven't noticed already, the best part about this recipe, other than giving your sad bananas a second life, is the fact that we're making everything in one bowl. Like, you can thank me later for the less dishes that you'll have to do in your life, okay? I'm just using a touch of coconut sugar, gonna add that in there, and then some maple syrup. It's gonna really give this nice, warm, golden flavor to these oatmeal bars. Now that I've mixed all my wet ingredients together, I'm gonna grab my oatmeal, the star of the show. It's about to be super glamorous. Add it straight in here. Along with some cinnamon. I love cinnamon, I think it's amazing, but you can totally use another spice if you want. You can use maybe a nutmeg if you like that better. I'll leave that choice up to you. And then some baking powder. And then, and mix everything together. Make sure everyone just becomes friends in here. Make sure we grab the edges, the sides of the bowl. Incorporate it really nicely. It smells so good. Mmm. Just wait till it's done baking though. That's good stuff. Okay. Now finally, this is a bit of the dessert for breakfast moment that I like to really capture in all aspects of my life, the chocolate chips. Just gonna fold these in. I will add, I don't measure these with anything but my soul. That's just how I choose to live my life, but again, you live yours the way you wanna live yours. I'm gonna fold that in, and you're probably wondering, like, Sama, why do you have some of these left over? Because I wanna save some for the top. Because for me, it's not less is more. When it comes to chocolate, not a thing for me. Okay, folding this in nicely until all the chocolate chips are just really nestled in there. <laughs> we want them to be cozy. Okay, perfect. Now, I love myself for being prepared. We've got our parchment lined pan and I'm just gonna add it straight into there. So let's lift this up. I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is my workout for the day, this movement right here. All right, so we're gonna add this straight in there. Get everything out, scrape the sides. Oh my God, I cannot leave that chocolate chip behind. That would be so sad. Okay. And then I'm just gonna spread it out throughout the pan so it's nice and evenly distributed. <laughs> Okay, because I am me, I'm gonna add some more chocolate chips on top, just for aesthetics. I like to take nice photos of my food. It's also really fun to make it presentable and looks pretty, too pretty to eat, but not really, because we will be eating it. Okay, and then the last, the last thing that I wanna do is add a banana on top. This is, again, purely for <laughs> me to have some nice aesthetics for my photographs, and that's fine. That's again, how I choose to live my life. So what I'm gonna do is just cut it right at the tip of the banana, slice it straight through like this, okay? And now I'm just gonna peel this off like I normally would. And then you've got two perfect halves of banana. Pretty easy. I'm gonna lift it straight out and I'm gonna place it on to my bars, like that, and then the other half. And then I'm gonna add one more for the middle. Go ahead, and again, I have a piece of oatmeal on my finger. <laughs> really didn't wanna be baked, okay. And go from the top, slice it straight down the middle. Go 
more sky off. Look at that. Hold that straight. And there, we're gonna nestle it down nicely. Wants to feel secure, wants to feel at home. And now, I'm just gonna add a little dusting of cinnamon on top, partially because I love cinnamon and partially because I want it to look really nice. Okay, now we're gonna take a little journey in the oven for about 22 to 25 minutes. Let's go. All right, hope you enjoy your time in there. All right, we've let it cool for about 10 minutes, and now, see, this is why we love being prepared with the parchment paper. We get to just lift this straight out of the pan, and then there's no oatmeal bar that's been left behind, like that. Okay, so the best thing about these bars, other than the fact that we're saving so many bananas' lives, is that they're super portable. So I'm just gonna slice them into little bars. You can take them on the go. You can just also have a nice sit-down oatmeal moment at home. You choose whatever you'd like to do. I love the corner piece. I'm just one of those people. Don't know why. Just crispy and caramelized on the edges. It's so good. Look at that. Delicious. And now remember these chocolate chips that I had saved for the top? See, this is why. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of powdered sugar just to get that nice contrast. A little bit there. Just on the rest of my bars. It's really pretty. Oh, went a little heavy handed over there. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a few pictures of it. Cause I didn't put that powdered sugar, that banana, those chocolate chips on for nothing. All right. There we go. <laughs> I'm really getting the shot. <laughs> little video. Get the inside. Okay, you know what? I think we got the shot. It's my time to taste. I'm pretty excited about this. Mmm. This is so good. You know what's really nice about this as well? It's not too sweet. So it's really great if you'd like to even add a little drizzle of honey on top maybe a little more peanut butter, almond butter, whatever you have to kind of create this nice sit down oatmeal moment at home. It's like banana bread, but it's a little more textured from the oatmeal. And then you've got the chocolate chips that are totally giving it this like cookie dough vibe. I would eat cookie dough for breakfast. And I am kind of, delish. This has inspired me and I have a lot more ripe bananas in my kitchen. So I think 
we might have to make my banana cream cheesecake. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients. Okay, do you wanna know something crazy about this cheesecake? You don't have to bake it. No ovens are involved. We're just gonna pop into the freezer to make it, which kind of means it's a cross between an ice cream bar and a cheesecake. Two things I really can't live my life without. So let's make it. The first thing I'm gonna do is prepare my pan with some parchment paper. So what I'm gonna do is just line it straight into the pan and I'm creating these flaps on the sides so that it's gonna be super easy to lift the cheesecake up after it's done freezing. Just like that. And now it's ready for our crust to find a home in it. So this crust is gonna be really nice and textured. It's gonna be a little crumbly, it's gonna be crispy. Because it's gonna have a really nice creamy filling to go on top of it, I wanted to create that contrast. Everything is gonna to come together in this food processor starting with some raw almonds as the base. This is gonna give that really nice, crispy, crunchy element to the crust. Gonna toss that in there. And now, to sweeten the crust up, we're gonna use some dates. I love dates, not the romantic kind, the medjool kind, okay? So we're gonna add these in. This gives a really nice caramel sweetness to the crust and also it's gonna allow it to be a little bit sticky and pliable so we can actually just stick it straight into our pan. And now we're gonna add a little bit of creamy almond butter. That's straight inside. You can also use the peanut butter if that's what you have on hand, totally fine with me. I won't judge you. A bit of melted and cooled coconut oil going in there as well. of vanilla extract and then I like to use a little pinch of salt this is gonna bring out that natural sweetness and create a bit of a contrast perfect I'm just gonna scrape down the sides just to make sure nobody is caught nobody is left behind and process it again Good. We want it to be crumbly, but there's also gonna be some of those pieces that remain. Now it's time to just pack it into our pan. Okay. Oh no. This is precious crust. 
precious cargo. We can't waste any of it. Now all I'm gonna do is just press it into my pan. Like this. And you wanna make sure it's evenly distributed throughout the entire pan, and you can kinda see that it's sticking together as I tend to pack it. This is gonna serve as a really nice home for our creamy, luscious cheesecake filling. It's gonna be really happy sitting on top of here. We don't want the edges of this pan to feel unloved. We want the crust to be in there too, so make sure you get those corners as well. Okay. I think this looks pretty good if I ask myself. We're done packing the crust into the pan and now I'm gonna go grab the ingredients for our filling. The secret about this cheesecake filling is that it's actually made from cashews. They're super rich and buttery, so they're the perfect ingredient to make really creamy sauces and fillings like we're gonna do in this cheesecake. But to get it there, we need to first soak them. You always wanna make sure you're starting with raw cashews. These are completely raw and unsalted. And you can either soak them overnight if you have patience and time, or you can do what I did, flash soak them for one hour in hot water until they're nice and soft. You are not gonna believe how creamy this cheesecake filling is gonna be. We're starting with our raw and soaked cashews, going straight into our blender. Right in there. We're following it up with some coconut milk. I'm using full fat coconut milk here. We're not messing around with the low fat kind. Perfect for a really rich and creamy cheesecake filling. And I think this is a really great time to mention that this is a non-dairy recipe. I don't know if you've noticed, but all of you non-dairy folks out there, rejoice because this is for you. Time for our banana, our star. We rescued it from its fate in the trash, perhaps. All right, pop that straight in there. Just breaking it up so it's a bit easier to blend. And now we're gonna go in with our maple syrup. The ripe banana is really nice because it's super sweet already, but the maple syrup is just gonna pull it all together. I really like using maple syrup here because it's a really nice, warm, and golden contrast to those rich and creamy cashews. In there, and then a little touch of vanilla extract. Perfect. All right, we're gonna add some melted and cooled coconut oil. Just a touch. Now we're gonna add some lemon juice. This is super important because you've got rich ingredients like the cashews and the full fat coconut milk. So we want the lemon juice to give it that zing and really balance out those rich ingredients. I'm using this to catch the seeds. At home, you can even just put your fingers underneath the lemon and then catch the seeds in your hands. A little DIY. And then to balance everything out, balance that sweetness, bring it out a little bit, I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. Okay, now it's time to blend. Okay. 
okay. You just really cannot believe it. It's so smooth and so creamy. I wanna show you a little peek. Look at that. I'm gonna taste it a little and see if I think it needs anything. Taste a bit. I'm gonna add a little more lemon juice and a little more salt. You can totally adjust this to your liking. I just like a little more zing. And then that salt's gonna really bring out that sweetness. Okay, we're gonna blend again. fresh spoon and taste one more time. Perfect. All right, now it's time for this filling to find a home on top of our crust. And there's no dairy in this. Kind of crazy. I'm gonna grab my spatula. This is precious. I can't waste a bit. Now I'm just gonna make sure that's nice and smooth. You can even tap it a little bit to distribute it like this. Shake it around, make sure it hits all the edges. Now, I like to pretend I'm Picasso a little bit with the toppings, you can use whatever you'd like, but I'm gonna use some sliced almonds, straight on top. Sprinkle them around. I'm gonna do a little bit of cinnamon. And finally, just a little pinch of flaky sea salt. Okay, don't be mad at me because now we have to wait a little bit. We're gonna put this in the freezer for five hours, but I promise you it is going to be worth it. Now I'm just gonna cover it with some plastic wrap so that it's protected and it goes into the freezer for its kind of long journey. And then it's ready. Patience is so worth it. I'm so excited about this. Just gonna remove my plastic wrap. Look at that. We almost don't deserve it. All right, this is why the parchment paper flaps are the best. We just lift it straight out of the pan like this. And now all I'm gonna do is slice them into little cheesecake bars. What you can also do is slice them into fingers as well if you want more of a bite-sized snack. I'm gonna go ahead for the full picture, the full bar. Look at this. I just have to show you. Can you believe that there's no dairy in this? It looks so creamy. All right, that's for me. This is my slice. I am so excited to dig into this. All right, here I go. It's simply not even fair. It's so creamy. It's such a great way to use the nearly perished banana that's been sitting on your counter. Creamy, you would never have any idea there wasn't any dairy in this. You know what? I really wish I could eat all of these myself, and I probably would, but I'm gonna be a little nice. I'm gonna send a picture to some friends and see if they wanna have some. Yes, they usually do. No one really ever says no. I mean, why would you? Wouldn't make sense, it's so good. I think I'm gonna deliver some to their houses. I'm such a good friend. Okay, Sue, guess what I brought you? <laughs> your favorite banana cream cheesecake. I made it for your birthday. Oh, this is my favorite, thank you. You're welcome. I did the same like date and almond crust that you like. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of does. Let's put a smoothie on top of it. 
to Dada's Eat. <laughs> to Dada's Eat. To Dada Eats. <laughs> Dada Eats squared. Dada Eats. Eh? <laughs> Dada Eats. <laughs> We are back. I'm Anthony Contrino, and it is time to get saucy. We've got a brand new kitchen and new episodes coming your way this summer. Tune in to Today All Day, Mondays at 11 a.m. Hey, everybody, welcome to The Boost. We got a lot to get to today, starting with our colleague and our friend, Richard Engel, he and his wife, Mary, lost their beloved son, Henry, to the rare genetic disorder, Rett syndrome. But thanks to a remarkable team of scientists and researchers, Henry's legacy lives on, and there is hope for a brighter future for other children affected. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. yeah. Our son, Henry, was our everything. Sweet, beautiful and determined. Good morning, good morning. Good but he was also good morning, unlucky. Good morning, good morning, born with a rare genetic disease called Rett syndrome. A single devastating typo in his genetic code robbed him of the ability to walk, talk, and control his body. It also caused numerous underlying health conditions, including impacting his breathing. But my wife Mary and I, she was the main caregiver never quit for a moment, and neither did Henry. With regular therapies to keep his body moving and his mind active, he was making progress, learning to take a few steps in his walker and communicate with cards and a computer. When his little brother Theo arrived, he poured in love too. For most of his life, Henry was, in spite of it all, happy until his last few months, when he developed a new condition, dystonia, uncontrollable shaking and muscle contractions. His underlying health issues got much worse. And we appreciate you taking the time to celebrate the life of Henry Thomas Engel. Until it was too much. But Henry's journey continues. This week in Houston, at the Duncan Neurological Research Institute, they celebrated him dedicating a balcony in his name. Our Rett syndrome research will continue to push as hard as possible to develop treatment. This is how we will honor Henry's life. Dr. Hoda Zogvi, who discovered the genetic cause of Rett syndrome, believes Henry's cells hold the secrets to finding a cure. They're still using his preserved cells for cutting edge research. Henry had no bad qualities, no, none, <laughs> zero. But the one that I thought about when I was thinking about today was his tenacity. He was so hardworking and he had to do so much that a child should not necessarily have to do. Um, but he did it and he did it most often with a smile and he just never gave up. It didn't happen in his lifetime, but with his cells still working, still contributing to science, it would be an amazing, miraculous le legacy. It would and he will. To. He definitely will. While there are other children suffering from Rett syndrome, Henry's specific genetic mutation had never been seen before. And for science, one of a kind is valuable. Does the research with Henry's cells have the possibility to advance other kinds of neurological issues? Absolutely. And you can apply that to hundreds of forms of autism where only one copy of the gene is missing, but the other copy is still there. What was it like for you and members of his research team who worked so closely to learn that he hadn't made it? So that was one of the hardest days in our career. I would share openly with you. We all cried. We lost our son our Henry. He was almost seven years old, but he will always be with us. And even now, he's hard at work to help other children whose lives are more difficult than they should be. Mary Richard, for, mm -hmm. so thank you for your courage yeah. to be here and, mm -hmm. and to tell the story. And Mary, you said something so wise that you just, 
you want this to work to go on. You don't no. want to see anybody else have to go through what Henry and no, what you we went don't. through. No, we don't. We think of this as, um, you know, we we have a vendetta <laughs> against yeah. the syndrome, and we want it, we we want to cure it. We don't want anyone else to go through this. We don't want any other child to lose their life. I mean, we you know, Henry lost his life to Rett syndrome, and it, mm. we want it gone. The science is so important in watching you guys, you talk with the doctor and seeing the advancement. Um, but for a lot of people, it's a, it's a child who you lost. And I was just wondering, because a lot of people have to cope with things, where's the place that you put your grief? You had an exercise that you do that I think might be helpful um, to others. Yeah, so I was just, yeah, I, this is something, well, this is something I'm going to start to do. Mm -hmm. um, I've been, long walks really help. Mm -hmm. um, also just, when it comes over me, and, and, and I think about Henry all the time, I just go with it. Because to push it down and try to not feel it doesn't mm. help at all. Um, but a good friend of mine, um, Elizabeth, who I think is watching, mm -hmm. uh, she um, lost her daughter, and she told me about um, that she writes in a journal every night a letter to Caroline. Mm. And I thought that was just wonderful, so I ordered a journal. Mm. And I'm going to start to try to do that, because I think that ending my day with writing to Henry and just saying, this is what we did today, you're still part, you know, he's still, our, he's still very much part of our family. Mm -hmm. Will, will help. So it's always, it's evolving, you know, yeah. I'm picking up things along the way. Sure. And he's still working for other mm -hmm. children. Yeah. How are you doing, Richard? Mm -hmm. This was uh, obviously tough, but it was also positive mm -hmm. because we're trying to keep this going. We're trying to keep the fight going. There are a lot of families out there who saw our story, heard about Henry's mm -hmm. story over the years, mm -hmm. and we want to let them know that we haven't given up, mm -hmm. that Henry hasn't given up on them. We're all still we're, we're all still in this because there's a killer out there, mm -hmm. and we're making progress, mm -hmm. and and we want to keep it up mm -hmm. until till we can settle this score, mm -hmm. this horrible disease. Mm -hmm. So much hope there. Meantime, for two New Jersey moms, being a parent to a child with a disability took them on an unexpected journey, and now they found a way to spread support to others. Take a look. Hi, I'm Jess, and this is Addie, and I'm an extra lucky mom. I'm Taryn, this is Raya, and I'm an extra lucky mom. Uh, extra lucky mom to me is somebody that takes care of someone, or loves someone, or knows someone, or is an advocate for someone that has extra needs and feels lucky to do so. In July 2020, when Jess Puerello welcomed her second daughter, Adeline, into the world, an unexpected diagnosis would change everything. Her diagnosis went completely undetected throughout my pregnancy. The pediatrician gets called in and my husband gets asked to come over. They're telling him, your daughter has Down syndrome. I felt a lot of grief. I loved my baby immediately. There was no denying that. I knew nothing about Down syndrome. I knew nothing about disability. So I had a lot of fear and I thought my life was over. Meantime, just 20 miles away, mom of four, Taryn Lagonegro, was also navigating a world of new challenges with her youngest daughter, Rhea's Down syndrome diagnosis. She's gonna need weekly therapy of three different types of therapies. I remember feeling like I'm never gonna be able to handle that. It was important for me to just take it one day at a time. My friends that I've had my whole life or my mom friends and all of that, everybody was so supportive, but it was hard to not have anybody who truly got it. That feeling of isolation would lead both Jess and Taryn to seek out a group of other parents who were facing similar experiences. It really wasn't until I found a group of people, including Taryn, that I felt less lonely. So in May of 2021, they decided to create an online community for caregivers of children with disabilities called Extra Lucky Moms. Come on. <laughs> our mission as moms in the disability community is often creating a more inclusive world for our kids. What was missing in this space was a place where all parents could come together and spread the joy of disability parenthood. When we create a place where everybody belongs, that means the children, that means the moms, the dads, whoever it is, to be able to provide support to each other. Moms like Michelle Frushine know how important it is to have a support system. <laughs> At eight months old, Michelle's daughter Haley was diagnosed with a rare genetic disorder called Jordan syndrome. I didn't envision, you know, juggling therapy appointments and doctor appointments and trying to figure out what adaptive equipment to get my child. And life as a caregiver can get hectic. 
I feel like some days or some weeks, it's like, there's nothing. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, 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 appointment and juggling a therapy session or just trying to schedule things. But when Michelle did find an online community of other parents, she felt a sense of relief. I stumbled across extra lucky moms. And while it's a different diagnosis, that doesn't mean anything. This community extends to moms and, and dads and caregivers and being a community for each other. This inclusive club has become a place where caregivers can celebrate the wins, both big and small, together. You know, my daughter holding up her head is really huge. In the disabled community, we, we call it inch stones, not milestones, because for us, it's inches, and it may take a little bit longer, but they get there. So it's every smile and every <laughs> giggle from their daughters that remind Jess and Taryn what unconditional love really means. They are so much more than their diagnosis. Our mission is to show people that and, and to spread the joy. Having Raya reminded me to find the comfort and the gratitude in those little moments that are happening every day, the little tiny achievements. Maybe it took her two and a half years to walk, but we had a lot of joy in between those two and a half years. It is just one of the greatest honors of my life to be her, her caregiver. <laughs> oh, that we, face. Joining us now, <laughs> Jess and Taryn, co-founders of Extra Lucky Moms. Y'all, that was the most yes. beautiful story. Thank you. And can I tell you, I love the title of your organization. Thank How you. did you come up with Extra Lucky Moms? Well, we, it kind of really was amazing. It all happened so quickly. Yeah. Extra really represents the extra chromosome for Down syndrome. Oh. And Lucky represents how we feel to be their parents mm -hmm. of, of these beautiful girls. Yeah. And moms, because we're yeah. moms. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. One of the things I loved watching, Taryn, you guys watching that piece, every time your girls came up, you started laughing yes, and clapping. There yeah. she is. So how do, how do those little girls inspire both of you? It's, it's changed the way I look at the world and just um, keeping things in perspective of how... There's just so many um, beautiful differences about all of us, and we, if we take a moment to just celebrate them and not just create boundaries between each other, that the world is a much more beautiful place. I think I'm so enamored at you guys because you kind of had your hands full before you started an organization. And some people might have thought, well, let us take care of this first. But you decided that you were going to spend that extra time and help out everybody else. Why was that something that you said, we, ha we almost have to do that? Well, when we met, we really helped each other through this journey. It can be a little bit of a lonely experience. Yeah. Um, and leaning into each other in our friendship helped us advocate um, mm -hmm. in a bigger way. And we wanted to pay that forward because it did so much for both of us and for our children. After the break, a woman going to extraordinary lengths to find friendship and sisterhood. Stay with us. Hey guys, welcome back to The Boost. I'm so excited for you to meet a woman who's made it her mission to visit all 50 states and spread sisterhood and friendship throughout her journey. Unlike many of us, Sherry Lee is holding true to her New Year's resolution to meet 50 women in all 50 states. The adventure begins 
Her goal is simple, to find the things that unite us in an increasingly divided world. Sherry didn't travel much as a child. Her Japanese-American parents were interned during World War II and came to believe they would not be welcome while traveling in the U.S. It wasn't until Sherry was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2017 that she made it her mission to live purposefully. This January, she hit the road with plans to meet 50 women. Exhale the top and squeeze, yes. Some complete strangers. Yeah. Others, former connections. Each visit includes these women sharing their lives and incredible words of wisdom. With 15 states down, Sherry is just getting started. I love that. And Sherry is with us now. Good morning to Hi, you. Hi, Sherry. Good morning. Oh, I love New York. I'm so excited. Oh, well, happy you're here. I talked a little bit about it in that piece, but you call it the 50 States Project. Talk about why you wanted to take this on. Yeah, well, I want to see the world differently. Mm -hmm. And as mentioned, my parents, I'm adopted, but my parents who adopted me were interned in World War II. Mm. So I grew up not traveling and also believing that, you know, the entire U.S. was not open to me. Mm. So I want to change that belief and believe everything's available to me. Good for you. That's yeah. great. All right. So New York State is your, your 16th state. Yeah. Uh, who are you going to be meeting up with here? So I meet a woman that I met in 1987. So these women, all 50 women, are either women I don't know at all mm -hmm. or I've had very little contact with in the last 35 years mm -hmm. or so. Uh, so this woman, we didn't go to high school with each other, but we were in high school when we met. So how do you decide who you're going to meet when you come to yeah. each state? Well, so I received 27 on my own, and a lot of these women were women that I worked with but never met in person. Um, and then I reached out to friends and asked them for help. They sent me up with connections. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, I went on LinkedIn and, oh. and looked for yeah, people, and, and then I would send them all my information. So I had no specific criteria other than mm -hmm. they communicate well with me because yeah. I'm flying out to meet them. Yeah, I, so I love this idea, and I'm sure you went into it thinking, you know, things would go a certain way but mm -hmm. tell us about some of the lessons you've learned and what perhaps went a little differently than you thought yeah so it's constantly evolving as I go along I realize this project is becoming um, even bigger than me but for instance I went to Arizona and met a woman in Arizona Anna who introduced me to her friends and one of her friends was 93 year old Betty mm -hmm. oh. and Betty uh, constantly makes friends I found out in Arizona they call walking hiking I call it walking but apparently <laughs> yeah. she lives at the top of a hill so people hike up past her house okay she has a group of middle-aged men that come and uh, have coffee with her every day because yeah. she invited them in, or not every day but every mm -hmm. time they walk and because she invited them in and she's constantly making friends even at her age and it made me think that's that good. perhaps mm -hmm. that's the secret of getting older yeah. it's not that you Want, you get older and you lose friends, but you get older and you have more and time to make friends. friends. Yeah, that's so so I, lessons like that. I understand that this project has also really sort of forced you to come out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. in some other ways, including singing in public. Yes, oh. oh. yeah, so, <laughs> so I'm a self-described tone-deaf person, but I did learn <laughs> that I'm not tone-deaf. Uh, the yeah. woman I met in California owns a music school. She is professionally trained. Mm -hmm. She said, let me give you a voice lesson when you get here. Okay. And so she had music ready, and I said, well, you know, I just want to learn how to sing Happy Birthday. I've never sang Happy <laughs> Birthday out loud. Thing, really? I'm so bad at it. Well, so even my kids' birthdays growing up, I'd tell someone, you start it, and I'd lip sync right. Happy Birthday wow. to my own children. <laughs> so I'm in, I'm in her place. We recorded, I learned to sing Happy Birthday, you know? I'm probably a little pitchy, but I sang it. Three weeks later, I'm at a restaurant with a, two girlfriends, yeah. one girlfriend's birthday. They bring the cake out, and I sing happy You're birthday out loud. It. I mean, it wasn't like screaming it really oh, loud. Oh, it was okay. you know it, it, it gave me go. so much joy. Yeah. I almost got emotional. I didn't realize yeah. how joyful it would feel to sing happy birthday oh, to a that. friend. And it's all from just the power of connecting and connecting yes, with people all around absolutely. the country. It's beautiful. Sherry, thank you so thank much. You so much. Good lesson yeah. for all of us, too. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Good luck. Oh, yes. Women are not the only ones looking to forge friendships. These next two guys are helping men find deeper connections and create new bonds. Take a look. Matt Ritter and Aaron Cairo call themselves champions of yeah. friendship. Hey. hey! Friends for over 35 years, the two along with seven others gather every fall over a steak dinner and take a vote. Who had the best year? And the winner is crowned Man of the Year and gets a big old trophy. What do people think when you tell them about the trophy? I'd say their first reaction is, 
I wish I had something like that. It's a physical manifestation of friendship ensconced in silver and wood. We always say it's not really about the physical trophy. It's just about something bringing us together 365 days a year. But theirs is an unusual connection. For years, adult friendships have been on the decline, resulting in a so-called friendship recession. And while women haven't completely escaped the trend, the problem seems to be hitting adult men particularly hard. According to a recent survey, 15% of American men say they have no close friends, and 50% say they have three or fewer friends outside of family members. Guys have been taught to prioritize career and family, and then they get to our age and they're like, oh wait, I haven't talked to my friends in 10 years, and the wives are like, get out of the house. That's why K. Rowe and Ritter started the Man of the Year podcast. Welcome to Man of the Year. Using their own experiences to help others make and keep friends. I think we've forgotten how much we need that human connection, especially in the past years of the pandemic. We need that human connection as much as we need, you know, money and exercise and everything else. Friendship, as it turns out, can be good for your health, with the Harvard study showing loneliness can be as bad for you as smoking or excessive alcohol use. The same study found close relationships keep people happy and have a larger effect on mood over time. More than money or financial success, and if you're looking to make new friends, step outside. Oh! We tell people to find your third place, which is your home is your first place, work is the second place, the third place is any place that people socialize besides those. So place of worship, bar, top golf. In the spring when the weather gets nice, that's what we call friendship cuffing season. There's a lot more activities, things to do. You wanna go out and be social. So you need friends to go do that with. Hey, Rowan Ritter say, the thing to remember? Be the ball. Be the friend. Well, we always say be the friend as opposed to waiting for someone else to be a friend to you. I got these tickets, this is where I'm going, and this is what we're happening. The best equation for a friendship is simple. Two words. Showing, showing up. up. Yeah, you just gotta show up for your friends on the good times, the birthdays, the bad times, the illnesses. It's actually not that complicated or yeah. difficult. We wanna just help you a little bit. You just need to do a tiny bit more. The effort is low and the rewards are super high. For Sunday Today, Gotti Schwartz, Los Angeles. I love you, buddy. I love you, too. Coming up, we're going to turn to man's best friend with a puppy party. See the unexpected way that one wellness organization is really leaning into their downward dog. That's after the break. here on The Boost with Woof Wellness NYC, an organization helping its participants find their downward dog and maybe some puppy love along the way. It doesn't get much better than a beautiful day in New York City with puppies and yoga. 
Puppy yoga classes can be seen all over social media, popping up in cities across the world. For Sophie Hessler, a 24-year-old graphic designer in New York City, the idea seemed fetching. I have seen puppy yoga in places like London. I did not see anything in New York. I was looking for it everywhere and I just could not find it. What is it about yoga and Pilates in general that it does for your life? I think it's super important to just ground yourself and take care of your body, especially in a place that's so busy and hectic. And combining it with dogs that are good for the soul, it's an instant serotonin boost. In her spare time, Sophie also fostered local rescue pups that were waiting to be adopted. It's loving, you get to spend time with the dog, train it, take care of it, and really give it a wonderful home. You also save two lives because you're taking care of one and then the rescue is able to pick up another one. Oh, absolutely. I fostered a dog that looks quite a bit like this one in my lap and now I more than foster her. She lives with me <laughs> forever. Shelters throughout the country are in a crisis since the pandemic. In 2022, 4% more animals entered shelters than left them, the majority of intakes being dogs. So Sophie decided to organize puppy yoga and Pilates classes full of adoptable rescues, calling it Woof Wellness NYC. How often do people foster or even adopt after these classes? Very often. At the end of a lot of classes, we have people putting in applications for the puppies. And if they're not putting in applications, they're usually talking to the rescue about how to foster and get more involved. Sophie has sold out every class, even going viral on TikTok after people online caught a glimpse of the puppy party. You think about how good you feel after something like a Pilates class, and then you think about how good you feel spending time with a puppy. How great is it to merge those two things? It's amazing. It really is just nonstop smiles. I think my <laughs> mouth hurts after every class from smiling so hard, and the puppies enjoy it. All right. Are we ready to hit the mat? Yeah, let's go. Our instructor, Nina, started us off with a little inspiration. Don't think of this as a workout. Think of this as like a treat and a reward and a celebration of movement. <laughs> Hi, baby. Good girl. Then our furry friends joined in, and we got moving. Just allow yourself to feel good. So similar to how the puppies are when they wake up in the morning, they don't think about what they're supposed to do. They just move. Take your gaze to follow the fingertips. And now as you exhale, your right arm threads under your left. Go ahead and drop your right ear and shoulder down to the ground, giving yourself a nice twist. Ooh, maybe you get a lick on the ear from a puppy. With every downward dog, I found myself falling more in puppy love with the class and with little Dina. Namaste. As puppy Pilates came to an end, it felt nice to take a pause and relax with our canine companions. I want you to really be present and tune in to all the good energy that's in the room, all of the puppy energy, the people, and just take a moment and let it soak in. All in all, not a rough day at the office. So much fun. I feel fantastic. What you said about we're in New York with puppies, it's a beautiful day. What could be better? Thank you for coming. Thank you. I might be taking a dog home as well. <laughs> oh, looks like they were having a good time. We'll be back right after the break.
Welcome back to The Boost. We've got one last can't-miss story. Check it out. For the father you're about to see receiving his <laughs> diploma, well, it pales in comparison to a simple reward of being a dad. Here's why. Ashish says his heart melted when his daughter called out to him. He says that moment will stay with him. For the rest oh, of his life. Times have changed. Oh. Yeah. My father would have yelled, You're grounded. <laughs> We are so glad you could join us here on The Boost. We hope we helped lift your spirits a little bit and encouraged you to find some deeper human connections in your lives. We'll be right back here tomorrow on Today All Day. It's time to go. Welcome to Pop Star Plus, everybody, your weekly roundup of the latest in entertainment and pop culture. Okay, warmer weather has arrived finally, and that means music festival season is officially here. From Coachella to Lollapalooza, there are so many now. This time of the year, it's jam-packed with events for music lovers just like me. All right, so today we're going to celebrate artists who are headlining some of the biggest festivals this year. We're going to start with a woman behind the iconic hits, Truth Hurts. Special and about damn time. Lizzo, a multi-hyphenated rapper, singer, actress. She rose to popularity with her party anthems and messages of self-love and acceptance. This weekend, Lizzo taking her talent to New Orleans to Jazz Fest in what's sure to be a show to remember. Now, back in November, Lizzo stopped by our Studio 1A to talk about her music and her documentary, Love Lizzo. Take a look. Good morning, sweetie. We are so happy to see you. Yes. Oh, what? She brought a little friend. <laughs> a shiny. Gold looking good on you. You, you mentioned her, and she appeared. Oh. My Emmy is still like by my bed. Because right after the Emmys, I went straight on tour, and I haven't been able to put her on my bookshelf. <laughs> well, she looks good. You mm -hmm. wear it well. Lizzo, you've got this documentary coming mm -hmm. out about your life. And what has it been like for you mm -hmm. to kind of open up? with that and, and really tell your story. You're always so honest. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, you know, incredible. I think like people don't really know where I came from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they think all of this like beauty and talent just kind of spawned out of a clamshell one day, <laughs> but <laughs> I've been working for a long time. And so we started getting the cameras, uh, right after Coachella 2019. So I actually have the opportunity to truly definitively tell the story from 2019 and Truth Hurts going to number one all the way to right now with my arena tour. So it's it's going to be incredible. It's finally the full story on my turn. I love that. And Lizzo, it also takes you way back to when you were a little girl and when you were wondering, like, where do I fit in this world? I know I love to sing, but I don't see my place. I don't see, because they usually say, to be it, you have to see it. And you did not see it before yeah. you, but yet here you are. Yeah, there's a lot of baby Lizzo footage that I've never even seen before. Like, we had, like, a cousin who was like, you know, I got all these VHS tapes of you. And we were like, wait, what? <laughs> so that's another incredible thing about this doc is, like, there's a lot of never-before-seen footage of me, like, as a kid. Like, oh, and baby Lizzo's very cute. Oh, she is. <laughs> Someone might be calling you. Tell him you'll call him later. You're talking to Hoda and Savannah. <laughs> um, well, it's, yeah. I, I love, Lizzo, hearing about you picking up the flute as a little girl mm -hmm. and just being so dedicated to it, just falling in love and wanting to be mm -hmm. the best performer you could be. Mm -hmm. It's. It, mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Like, what was that in you that decided it's going to, I'm going to pick one of the hardest instruments mm -hmm. there is, and I'm going to become a master. Well, you know, Sasha is a huge character in this doc as well. And we have, like, we tell that story, you know, for people who are super curious. Like, I didn't pick the flute. The, the flute picked me. And you see so many photos of me in fifth grade and eighth grade and high school and, you know, college with the flute in hand. So we're going to we're going to dive into this. Yeah. Oh. Our connection's a little funky, 
but I'm hoping we can still hear you. I love how you name your suit, your flute Sasha. I mean, you're a huge Beyonce. Beyonce was a huge influence in your life, wasn't she? Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially growing up in Houston, um, which is another, another thing. People don't know where I'm from. I was born in Detroit, and I grew up in Houston. So, like, there's a lot of Houston ties, Destiny's Child ties. You know, I grew up watching everybody, you know, make Beyonce the hometown hero. So she was my hometown hero in a lot of ways. Well, Lizzo, you're just inspiring the next generation. And, in fact, you're so popular that we have the world-famous University of Missouri Band. The Mizzou Band is here. They're going to be in the parade. But they know your songs. Let's go. Strike up the band. Hit it for Lizzo. Okay. <laughs> what song it's about is this? Damn Time. Yes. <laughs> is that awesome? We asked them, can you play About Damn Time? They were like, oh, yeah, we know yeah. that. Turn up the music. <laughs> yes. Of course. Where's my pickle? <laughs> ah, I love it. Lizzo, thank you so much. We adore you. You can catch Love Lizzo starting tomorrow on HBO Max. Always love hearing from Lizzo. By the way, our very own Hoda and Jenna are going to be live from New Orleans on Monday and Tuesday. You can catch it here on Today All Day as well. Now, on to another music superstar, the great Sheryl Crow, good friend of mine, incredible person, incredible musician, 11 studio albums, nine Grammy Awards under Sheryl's belt. She knows her way around making a successful record, and what a great writer, too. Fans are going to get to see Sheryl Crow in June at Summerfest, the world's largest music festival. It's in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's so much fun. Earlier this year, Cheryl was nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and stopped by to talk about that honor. Here we go. Two, three, four. Can we start with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? <laughs> I just, just revealed you're one of the, part of the class of nominees for 2023. I, know. I can't believe it. I mean, I'm, I woke up to texts, just tons of texts saying congratulations. I feel like I'm, I've been nominated for an Oscar for a movie that I've been writing for like 30 years. Cheryl's story started in a small town in Missouri. You left, packed your bags, decided to go to L.A. to make it. Yeah. Did you ever dream, hey, one day this girl's going to be nominated to be in the Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I was just so happy if I could like get a couple of gigs here and there while I was waiting tables. And, you know, I mean, I am the quintessential have a big dream, chase it, never know what can happen. And here we are. If it makes you happy, all I want to do, I promised myself I wouldn't sing in front of you because I don't want to <laughs> soak up do. the sun. Do you have any favorites? I love playing if it makes you happy. Because I love that the audience, they can't help but sing or yell, you know, it's just like a big party. I mean, really all of them mean something to me because they've taken me around the world. They've allowed me to play in front of people that don't even speak my language. Throughout her legendary career. Cheryl has used her voice to make a difference, lending support to causes dear to her heart, like the Go Red for Women event. The evening bringing together survivors of heart disease and supporters to raise awareness. What does it mean to be able to perform for this group, of, for these women? It's empowering and it's very inspiring to play for women that you know are on the other side of something that catastrophic. Mm -hmm. And it does make you want to, you know, check into your family history and to live right, you know, to eat right, to know your blood pressure, cholesterol, to exercise. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States, causing one in three deaths every year. Heart health has certainly been in the spotlight this past month after Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest during a game. His parents were in attendance at the event to honor their son. Nina Hamlin introduced Cheryl to the crowd. The one and only Cheryl Crow. Cheryl, a survivor herself, after a battle with breast cancer, understands how support like this can make a difference. Is there a sisterhood with these women? Is there something that's perhaps unspoken? It's a strange club. You know, mm -hmm. I will be at a Starbucks or walking through an airport and I'll have a random person come up and say, I'm 15 years out, or mm -hmm. I'm a breast cancer survivor, or I just lost my sister. And 
there is just an immediate connection. It's not a club that um, I would have asked to be in, but it's one of those things that is also sacred to me that I can speak on behalf of my situation and encourage other people to follow taking care of their own health. Does it change you? Does it change your perspective? In some ways, it was liberating for me to uh, uh, redefine my life based on putting myself first. She's the best. What an inspiration, the great Cheryl Crow. When we come back, we're revisiting Willie's conversation with Luke Bryan in honor of his upcoming appearance at the Stagecoach Music Festival. Welcome back. When it comes to country music, Luke Bryan is certainly one of the biggest artists out there. Luke's going to be headlining one of the biggest festivals out there. It's called Stagecoach. It's out near that Coachella area in California. He'll be headlining the main stage. Now, back in 2021, our own Willie Guy sat down with Luke to catch up on all things that were going on in his world. You know what I love about you, Luke? You're a hands-on artist, and you know what yeah. every one of these buttons does. Yeah, this is the uh, flux capacitor. <laughs> Luke Bryan does his work on the other side of the glass, inside recording studios like this one along Nashville's Music Row. You've recorded in here. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time here in Ocean Way, and there's been, you know, some really amazing stuff that I've gotten to do in here, and uh, so it's good to be back here. Luke arrived in Music City 20 years ago from the small town of Leesburg, Georgia, where he worked for his dad processing peanuts. Born here, live here, die here. Luke's rise from the peanut dust of South Georgia to the very top of the music world is the subject of a new docu-series called My Dirt Road Diary, where viewers get a look at the country superstar's earliest moments on stage. Big revelation for me, Luke. Theater kid. <laughs> Luke Bryan, theater kid. I was a good little athlete, but I, I had started playing guitar, and I'm looking around. I'm like, I seem to be getting more reactions with the guitar, and I really did stumble into the theater aspect. But my drama teacher was Robbie Davis, and when he heard my voice, he was like, you're trying out tomorrow for my one act play. And I'm like, man, I don't think that's my thing. And he goes, I don't care if it's, it's your thing or not. I'll see you after school. But the 45 year old's road from that stage to the ones he now plays at sold out stadiums across the country has been marked by milestones of personal tragedy. Luke's been through a lot. You won't know it, but I do. Luke was 20 years old and headed to Nashville the very next morning when his world suddenly stopped one night in the fall of 1996. His older brother Chris, Luke's best friend and biggest fan, was killed in a car accident. When Chris passed away, 
it was devastating because no one was more fired up about me going to Nashville than him. Luke stayed home with his grieving family, went to college, and settled in to life in Leesburg, working for his father. But one day, Luke's dad told him it was time to take his guitar and leave. I remember the color of the sky the day we were riding in the truck, and I had the anxiety of asking my dad, what did he think about me moving to Nashville? And he was like, if you don't go, I'm going to kick you out of here. I'm going to fire you. I'm going to make you go. That's a gift from your dad. No doubt. To let you go that way. With dad's blessing, Luke headed out for Nashville. But just as his star began to rise, tragedy visited again. Luke's sister, Kelly, died suddenly. Seven years later, her husband, Ben, died of a heart attack. Without a moment's hesitation, Luke and his wife Caroline took in the couple's three children. Was there any hesitation about talking through it all again? I mean, you've had so much success in your life, but you've also had so much tragedy in your life. Yeah, I mean, when you start talking about um, the loss of siblings and, and even the loss of my brother-in-law, gosh, you almost feel anxiety of telling aspects of your life that are so tragic. But then I have to remember there are people out there that have gone through similar stuff that I have. And at the end of the day, we're trying to just tell the story of my, I mean, you know, we say it, my dirt road diary. The road took a happily unexpected turn in 2017 when Luke made a crossover leap becoming a judge on American Idol, alongside Katy Perry and Lionel Richie. Now you are getting a little pitchy, but your yeah. voice is pretty. Yeah. Being around Lionel and Katy, you know, they operate in a whole different level. They've never whispered, I don't know what they're doing. They leave me out of all the good stuff. We really enjoy each other's company. We enjoy working together for the common goal of finding a, a legitimate superstar. What a great guy. Good luck to Luke Bryan. By the way, this weekend also marks Virginia Beach's Something in the Water Festival. It's another great one where Marcus Mumford's going to be performing. When we come back, we're going to take a look at his chat with Willie about his first solo album. That's next. <laughs> back, best known as the lead singer of Mumford and Sons. Marcus Mumford rose to fame singing songs like Little Lion Man and I Will Wait, captivating millions of fans with a mix of, of course, bluegrass or some folk in that music, country as well. 
rock and roll. Well, back in September of 2022, Marcus released his very first self-titled solo album, and his talents will be on full display at this weekend's Something in the Water Music Fest in Virginia Beach. So Marcus sat down with our own Willie Geis last year to chat about that solo record. Let's take a look. Who's the best player in the band? Me. Whether holding a guitar or a ping pong paddle, Marcus Mumford can play. We used to take a table on tour. I should be much better than I am. Very backspinny. A lot of backspin Ooh. going on. Oh. At the moment, the Mumford & Sons frontman is out on the road without his bandmates, touring behind his debut solo album, Self-Titled. It's a proper album in a way we don't see them anymore, which is you've got to listen to the whole thing from 1 to 10 to hear the full story. Yeah, me and Beyonce trying to there keep, you go. The, keep the album fires burning. What made you want to sit down, step away from Mumford for a bit, and tell this story? I didn't think of it. I wasn't intentional about it at the beginning. I just wanted to write songs again. The first two songs that came out were Cannibal and Grace, which are the first two songs on the record. And as soon as I'd written them, I showed them to the guys in the band. I said, I don't know if this is a band record. I don't know if it's even a record yet, but it feels like something I maybe should do on my own. And they all completely agreed and supported it. The album opens with Cannibal, Mumford's deeply personal and painful song about the sexual abuse he suffered as a child. But when I began to tell, it became the hardest thing I ever said out loud. So weird with songs, because you take the most private things that yeah. you have, and that moment of artist behavior where you write a song about something really personal, and then you do the most public thing you could do with it, and you go and publicize it, play it to people, and you, it goes on the radio or whatever. It, it's just a really weird thing that we do. I know a lot of people have stepped out and said, oh my gosh, he's telling my story, I can tell mine, things like yeah, that. Yeah, it's the reason I called it self-titled rather than using my name. Because I love the idea that other people might be able to access parts of my story and project their own onto it or feel something from their own story in mine, which is really cool. Uh, it's sort of the magic of music, I think. After Cannibal comes Grace a song that recounts the experience of Mumford telling his mother about the abuse only recently. I thought I'd, I'd talk my mum through that stuff, and I hadn't. So when I played her Cannibal was the first time she kind of clocked it. Wow. And so I wrote Grace, like, the first lyric is, well, how shall we proceed without things getting too heavy? And that sort of acts, I think, as an invitation for the audience to join me on what I think becomes a story about freedom and recovery and has a lot of hope in it. The album closes with a song about forgiveness, co-written by Mumford's friend, Grammy winner Brandy Carlisle. Release you from all the blame I know how. It's not necessarily saying forgiveness is done and dusted. I think it's more of a process, like a left foot, right foot thing. Like, I'm going to choose to do this now. Did you feel like you needed to forgive yourself for something? Oh, yeah, for tons of stuff. Really? Yeah, yeah. From a really early age, had things hidden in my life, and they would cascade into other hidden things, and it just, you get tangled up in it all. And so unpicking that and forgiving yourself for that stuff, I think is an important part of kind of recovery. Self-titled is dedicated to Mumford's wife, the Oscar-nominated actress Carrie Mulligan. The pair have been married since 2012 and have two young children. You know, I think Yoko gave creative partners like sometimes a bit of a bad rep. There was one day actually we were at the studio and Carrie was showing up and she was driving and they had like these really fancy little placards to, to put in front of your parking spots. So like one saying Marcus Mumford on it and I parked there and she called me and she's like, where do I park? I said, there's a slot allocated for you. And when she showed up, I'd got them to print a Yoko sign and put it in her parking spot, which I was thrilled about. She's like, good gag, babe. She liked it. Uh, she liked yeah. it. There's good reason that it's dedicated to her. And she's been phenomenally supportive all the way. That guy knows how to make some good music. Can't wait to hear that record in full. And enjoy, if you're in Virginia Beach, that music festival with Marcus Mumford. Coming up, Hoda and Jenna's chat with Lil Nas X about how music changed his life. Don't miss that next.
Yeah, welcome back. Pop Star Plus is going on. And ever since Old Town Road catapulted him into the spotlight, Lil Nas X has been quite busy topping charts and winning tons of awards. He's going to be appearing on stage next right here in New York City at NYC's Governor's Ball. It's a big music festival. That's in June. With so many accolades under his belt, don't know if you knew this, he also published a book. He's an author. So last year, uh, Lil Nas X stopped by here and chatted with Hoda and Jenna about that children's book and the impact music's had on his life. He's the Grammy-winning artist who became a household name with his hit song, Old Town Road. And now Lil Nas X is trading in his cowboy hat for a writer's cap with the new children's book. Okay, everyone's going to buy it. It's called C is for Country, and it teaches kids the alphabet and inspires them to be themselves, their true selves. Lil Nas X, we, we still have your song cranked up. <laughs> it is going to be one of those that will be played forever. Um, I kind of don't recognize you right now because you've <laughs> got hair. you've got new hair. Tell us about your look. I don't know what it is. What's what's different? I can't really tell. Oh, okay. So I got this hair for the Christmas time, you know, and I kind of just stuck with it. I really loved it, you know. It's so great, it looks so amazing. By the way, that song, Old Town Road. Thank do we guys. have it? Can we crank it? I it mean, makes you feel good. If we ha if we don't have it, can, or if we, do we also have Hoda dancing to it what? and her? Remember how you would dance to it? We all did. We all, we all did. We, we all, all did. Do. Yeah, was that a life changer? What a in, time. Yeah, was that a life changer? A life changer, it's like a everything changer. Uh, changed my life, beauty lives around me. I mean, it's still changing my life. What's that? Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, I know. I know. So, so tell us about this. I wonder, as a, a little kid, did you ever think, like, you know what? I'm going to be an author. I'm going to write a book for others to read. That's the last thing I would have imagined two years ago, even, you know. Uh, I'm just happy I'm in a place where I can do that. Oh my God, that picture. <laughs> there you are. Look at you as a little one. What What did you want to be when you grew up, when you were that kid? Honestly, when I was a child, I wanted to be a cardiovascular surgeon. <laughs> Oh my because gosh. like I knew like some people in my family with like heart problems and stuff. I was like, I want to save lives. Oh, oh no. And then when did you decide yeah. that you were going to go down your path? I honestly decided, uh, to go to music, like in 2018, when it, it kind of like literally changed my life. Mm -hmm. So this book is a, a, an alphabet book, but yeah. it has this beautiful message. What do you hope that kids, maybe kids like that picture of you <laughs> will take away from this? Uh, I guess like an honest and whole feeling that you should really do whatever you want and be who you want to be, but like genuinely, because I know a lot of times we hear it growing up, but people don't really mean it. You know, it's like to be who you want, but be who I want you to be. Yeah, that's well, it's hard because you know. especially when you're a little kid, you do want to, you're, everyone wants to please somebody. And when you find like the character in your book, a little boy who celebrates being just who he is, how long did it take for you to say, you know what, I'm going to be exactly who I am? You know, uh, I feel like I'm still on that path. I uh, just become more of myself every day and try to more open who I am or who I'm becoming mm -hmm. at that time and point in time, I guess. Yeah. Still I, authentic with that. Mm -hmm. Was there somebody that embraced you just as you were when you were a little boy? Uh, 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 not, I mean, I can't say really, but no. That's what I hope to change. Well, yeah, you're, you're getting embraced now big time. Uh, I hope people buy your book. It's called See Us for Country. Very cool. All right, so that's going to do it. That's all of our music festival info for today. Popstar Plus comes to a close. I know I'll be taking some time to enjoy a lot of that music outside this summer. Yes, cannot wait for that. Hope you will, too. Our, by the way, our today's summer concert series. I'm pumped for that. That's happening. So we'll see you soon next time on Popstar Plus. Have a great summer.
Our today food guest, Nadia Katerina Muna, who is incredible, also known as the Pasta Queen. She's taken social media by storm thanks to her tasty Italian recipes and hilarious videos, earning more than 43 million likes on TikTok. Nadia's here to tell us a little bit more about this breakfast dish from the new cookbook, which I told her I was going to move a lot of units today. Yes. Where's the book? Oh, you. I need you, you to gotta have the, the book. book. Garçon. Here's the book, the Pasta Queen, a just gorgeous cookbook. Nadia, good to see you. So you said your daughter uh, introduced you to the Tiki Taki. Yes. You see it and there's kids dancing. Yes. And how did you get into, how did you become a cook and a queen of it? All? As, a, as I was about to delete the app off my right, phone, good, I good. stumbled upon a blasphemous lasagna. Someone claiming to have made the perfect lasagna. And it was terrible. It was terrible. And you knew you had to get on the medium. It was team. a mission. It kind of ignited the fire <laughs> within me. <laughs> mission. All right, so what do we have here? And how, what is this breakfast pasta? So we are us? making a frittata di pasta. Okay. This is a Neapolitan special. Every family has their own version. Today we're making a pasta cake made out of salami, eggs, cheeses. If I go to the streets pepper. of Naples, is this a street food? This is Italian street food. Okay, well, let's and cut the salami. Best. Yes. That's a very large salami there. It what, is. is it, can you use, uh, substitute that for any sort of meat? Yes, or? you can do bacon, seasoned bacon, you can do mortadella, mm -hmm. um, anything. And also, it's beautiful because you can use any cheeses you want. Mm. Yep. I like fontina, Swiss cheese, provolone. Of course you do. Today we're using parmigiana and mozzarella. Okay, shall I whip these eggs up? So now we're adding the salami. Hoda and Savannah are here enjoying okay, the... Look at him! Hi. He's doing all the work! Yeah, no. no. Now make my nonna proud. Okay, She's good. watching. Aww. Okay. Aww. 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 And yes. the parmigiana. Yes. Okay. Great. It's beautiful. So we Gorgeous. have the spaghetti. Yep. These have basically been um, uh, kind of like tossed in with butter so that they're ready to be put into an oiled pan. Mm -hmm. And you really want to kind of like make sure that they're even. So this could have been last night's leftover like spaghetti, right? This is the perfect leftover. You can use short pasta, long yeah. pasta. So any old pasta would work. Any okay. old pasta yeah. would work. Yeah. Okay. It's perfect. Do you like Just doing like the TikTok videos? Oh, oh you're Aww. sweet. Aww. Aww. That's so nice. Your husband's Aww. taking away. Yeah, don't said, worry, your baby. Your said something Stop cooking in the kitchen. What did you say? You were the official? Chief pasta tester, yes. just like you are. Chief pasta tester, the CPT. Yes, yes, just like me. All right, so we're cooking this. You want to get this crispy, right? So, do so you... now you pour this on. Should I do that now? Okay. Yes. Great. So this is the... Look at him. We should oh. hire him. There we go. <laughs> So is that egg and cheese. This is egg, yeah. cheese, cheese, mozzarella, mm -hmm. pepper, salt, and salami. Okay. Do, you, do you need to press so you, it down at all? Do you, you just move it a little bit so that you make sure that the sauce goes everywhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you let it go on a low flame for about ten minutes until it kind of sets. How was it? Mm -hmm. Delish. You like it? Gorgeous. Did you make this? Yeah, I made this like this you. Can I make it? I don't know. Is this you know. hard? Is this a difficult dish for Let people to make? Let me wait. Uh, we're not done okay. yet. No. Uh, yeah. So okay. this is the thing. Once this is cooked at the bottom, yes. yep. the bottom becomes the top. Uh, Just sometimes oh, okay, in okay. people, yeah. you know, in life, uh, you know, when you're at the mm. bottom, all of a sudden you're at the top. Uh, That's tasty. Yeah. So now this was the base, and we flipped it. Pour a little, a little oh, marinara yeah. over it. But how yeah. did you flip it? You just like... So Let basically, you yeah. use a, anybody as a yeah. sheet pan, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you put it on top like that. Oh, oh and then, 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 yes. that's how I always wanted it. See, and then you slide tricky. it back in. And then, and then you, you let the it cook at the bottom for another ah, five minutes. Okay. So Grazie, it's, Nadia. It's gorgeous. No, just like you are. We're not done. We're not done. <laughs> what, do you ever drizzle a little sauce on this? Like a little marinara, a little something on top? No. If you want to, no? No, Carson. No. Absolutely not. So my 13 year old, when he wakes up and doesn't eat breakfast, this is like a piece of pizza. This is a perfect breakfast. Hey, Dad, I'll see you later. Just take it with you. This is like hiking food, picnic food. Yeah. You can eat it cold, hot. Whichever way you like. Yeah, Love it. it's kind of like a quiche. Yes. But with pasta. Yes, cool. exactly. How much fun did you have making the cookbook? You have over 100 pasta recipes in there. And, and, and what is your favorite of all 100? The lasagna from my nonna. That's oh. your best. Okay. It's the top. If I was stranded on a deserted island, I would want to have that with me. Right. Mm -hmm. It's substantial. I like well, that. Well, congratulations. You know, Thanks for I don't want aglio olio. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Grazie, Nadia. Thank Cook you for having is. me. The pasta queen. Yes. Thank yes. you, Olga. Thank you. 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 Thank
Today we are in for a treat because our pal Scott Conant is cooking for us. Scott is hosting Peroni's Taste of Italy tomorrow night at the 15th annual New York City Wine and Food Festival where 100% of the net proceeds will benefit God's love we deliver. Hey, Scott, good to see you, it's man. good to be here. Thank you for having so me. So it's you and Alex Gornicelli. Is that me and, me and Alex, my good friend Come Alex. On. We're going to have a blast. That's a party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah, event is a party. She's she's always so much fun. She's I love wild. her so much. And she is uh, she's such a great inspiration. She is just blowing up lately. So mm -hmm. we're uh, we're going to have a good time. Cool. All tomorrow right. Night. We're good. Yeah, we're going to make some pasta. I got penne. It's cooking over there. We have pancetta, butternut squash. Mm -hmm. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this butternut squash. I think a lot of people get... You know, it's a little bit of a challenge, butternut squash. You have to peel it. You have to take the seeds out of the mm -hmm. interior. So I always say there's two layers on that that you really want to get rid of, that that exterior, and then there's a whitish layer. You want to get, get rid, rid of that, that as much as possible. And then cut it into like one-inch chunks, okay. just like this. Very simply put it on a sheet tray, a little bit of salt, classic, mm -hmm. a little olive bit of olive yeah, oil. Nice. And you could toss it in a bowl and then put it together. Stick I roast it in the that oven. in like a 400 degree oven oh. for about 20 minutes or oh, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I really like that hard exterior. Then Got I it. take this pancetta. So raw pancetta, Look we're going to dice it just like this. And then Cook it in this pan that we have here. Where I already have some. Okay, some in so you there. chop it up into chop little pieces. Chop it up pieces. into little pieces, and then we're going to let that render out quite a Did bit. Did you put a, olive oil, or is that just the fat? I added a touch of olive okay. oil to it just to get it going. Mm -hmm. A little crispy pancetta is so good on anything, right? Give us a little texture. Yeah, yeah and I was, I was just saying to Hoda that not a single calorie in this pancetta. Yeah, you know, right? that's the Look good, at that. Yeah, that special This is the special, yeah, the special stuff. Right. We're going to let that render out and get a little bit crispy. And then, and then we're going to add uh, a little bit of sage. Sage, pancetta, I mean, oh. all these autumnal that? flavors. Oh. What is this? That's uh, a little bit of sliced shallot. A okay. pinch of crushed red pepper. Beautiful. I'm just going to let that mm. cook that until, out, really. until it looks like this. Okay. This is getting a little darker than I'd like it to be. Okay. What we can do is take this penne right uh -huh. out. You see. And I utilize that cooking liquid as well. So you use that pasta water in there? That's pasta water. Yeah. So that pasta water, what happens is, this is the same pasta water. And then as I cook that down, it's going to continue cooking the pasta about the rest of the way. So I cook the pasta about 90% of the way here. Uh, I finish it in this pasta cooking liquid. Do you like the liquid. pasta al dente or regular? I like it al dente. Everyone likes it chewy. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's the, you, it's the texture welcome. that's the so texture, delicious. The texture, you like a little bite? A little, a little bite, yeah. Okay. Do you do what I do, Scott? You just pull one out and try it and try to it. know it's done? Yeah. Okay, good. I don't I take the spaghetti and throw it against, no, no, against no. the Does wall. Does anyone yeah. actually do that or not? Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody must do yeah, it. Yeah, at some, mm. some point somebody did. That butternut squash is amazing. The butternut squash is oh. so good, mm. that concentration of flavor. Oh, mm. Something as simple as throwing it in the oven, it really, it's great. Mm. I do it with broccoli and cauliflower, autumn, really? autumn squashes, all that stuff. It's great. Oh, yum. Yeah. Anything more you can tell us about you and Alex in the event? Oh, my God, it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm. I don't even know how many restaurants are participating. Nice. It's, a, it's a ton of restaurants. I think there's still some tickets available, mm -hmm. which is the fun part. Alex is going to uh, sing a song, I think, at some point. Is she? Yeah, really? I'm putting her on the spot now. Oh. I hope she's watching this. I think mm -hmm. she's going to. There's some, <laughs> there's some of those Italian classics, you know? Mm -hmm. da, 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 yeah, like, yeah. yeah, like The Godfather. There you go. <laughs> You're tan. Where were you? I live in Arizona. Oh, well, okay. Cool. Yeah. Always tan. Right. You're around tan. <laughs> yeah. Cool. For this delicious recipe, and man, is it good, head to today.com slash food.
one and only Bobby Flay. For decades, we've watched him create some of our favorite dishes on countless TV shows and more than a dozen cookbooks. His latest is called Sundays with Sophie, and it takes us inside the Flay family kitchen, a collection of dishes inspired by meals with his daughter, Bobby. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this has got to be near and dear to you. You're, like, does Sophie cook too? You've been teaching her your skills? Yes, yeah, she, she does. So Sundays with Sophie, Sophie's basically standing in for everybody. The, oh. the idea is that it's, you know, it's Sunday meals or just meals for the family around the table. And actually, I, I devised a lot of these recipes during the quarantine because, like everybody else, I was cooking three meals a day at home. And so the recipes are incredibly simple, and they're really built for the home cook. Oh, good. I love that. Okay, yeah. simple. You had me at hello. Okay. Talk about this poached egg. This okay. is cacio pepe poached eggs. Coche, uh, cacio pepe <laughs> poached eggs. So cacio pepe simply means cheese and pepper. Yes. We usually see it classically on pasta. Yeah. But everybody's cacio pepping everything. Now at is this, this point. a breakfast or is this? I know. Is this breakfast or is this dinner? Oh uh, no. Like, this could this be is like this is like breakfast or brunch or okay. like it could definitely be like a late night. Listen, I, I there's plenty of times I. I love, I love uh, you know eggs for dinner. Me too. And so basically, what I do is I make a vinaigrette. This is very okay. very simple. So it's some white vinegar, some honey, some shallots. Mm -hmm. Okay. This reminds me of what we did our cooking thing together. I know. Remember? I know. I know. Do you want me to stir that? I can do that. Yeah, now. sure. Go right ahead. <laughs> exactly. Look at me whisking. And then some olive oil, and then we're gonna add some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, of course. And then some mm. cracked black pepper. So okay. there, there's the cheese, there's the cacho and the pepe, so to speak. I mean, this is black delicious pepper. right here. And this is our little dressing. Exactly. Okay. There you go. So then we're going to poach some eggs. And a lot of people are. Cont are I'm intimidated. Intimidated. All right, show me. So it's, it's two ingredients one of them is water, the <laughs> other is some vinegar. Okay. okay? Oh. And the vinegar is going to help the egg. This is my big word of the day coagulate the egg. Oh, okay. So it kind of breathes it. A little bit. Do you guys know how to poach an egg? Al, I know you do. Raise your hand if you can poach an egg. Al can. Oh, oh I, okay, yeah. Al poaches eggs with his eyes closed. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so we're going to just, and, and, and here's a little tip. I, I crack the eggs and I first put it into a little ramekin because mm -hmm. if I break it, I don't want to put it in here. Oh, true. And a lot of times you do that if you just, you just kind of go right into the water. Okay. So we're going to let those poach. They poach for, you know, just like, uh, I don't know, three or four minutes. And, and, and the best thing to do is kind of just do a little whirlpool so it gets a, gets a okay. really beautiful shape. Seems like it'd be hard to get those out. Oh, no, they come them. right out. Really? As okay. As, you, <laughs> as soon as you can get them out, you just take them out. It's very, very simple. Okay. Should be no problem. Okay. okay. We have some toast over here. All right. Okay. So. Um, sourdough bread, some kind of country loaf. Mm -hmm. I like mine like slightly thick, maybe, I don't know, maybe an, sort of like uh, an inch and a half or so, or so like that. And then just some, you know, good quality olive oil mm -hmm. on the bread. Yeah. And then some salt and pepper. And this is one of the things that people forget when they're making toast, don't forget to season it as well. Okay. Salt and pepper your toast. Like bring out the flavor of that delicious oh, yeah, bread I, that you I have. I never do that. Okay. Exactly. Good call. Okay. So we have the toast. I put a little more. I, I, I you take, just roast this in the oven, or you I'm put sorry, this in like yeah. the toaster oven? So you can oven. put it in the oven. You can put it under the broiler, or okay. you can just put it in the toaster. Got it. I think a toaster is probably the <laughs> best case okay. scenario, yeah. right? That's it works. What's happening over here? Should we get these out? Uh, you can do that if you want, but we're down here. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I was just concerned about that. Right this is this is Savannah <laughs> in the kitchen right here. This is the kitchen. <laughs> Coming to Food Network. Um, okay, so we have uh, some a garlic clove, and I just rub the garlic clove a little bit on the okay. on the bread just to give it a little bit of flavor. Yep. You know, this is a very savory meal. A little more olive oil, mm. and then we take our poached eggs, and we put the poached eggs right on top. Whoops. Mm. Right on top of our our bread. Okay. And then we take our dressing. Yes. Okay. Now this is the good stuff. And this Dressing's is where fantastic. this is where all the flavor mm. comes in. Okay. Oh yeah. Just How pour that you right over there. Wonderful. Insane. Insane. Really good. Some Parmigiano. Oh my oh. God. Some fresh Boom. chives. I mean, come on. Can you make the dressing ahead of time? Bob? Absolutely. And of course, you can use it for salads. Or you I was can about put it to ask that. Vegetables. Anything. Absolutely. Very very versatile. Okay. But this is what I was doing at home. It's like you know, so during, yummy. you're at home. Like you just take the ingredients that you have in your cupboard and you make dishes. And and this this was one of them. Okay. Well, that looks. Should I have a bite? Yeah, I'm sure. so yeah. worried about those other Dive eggs. in and go grab them. Okay, I just okay. don't want them to hurt. You got to cut it. Okay, here we go. You, someone else can have to read this. Gets gooey. Gets gooey. Uh huh. Gets gooey. Oh, oh fantastic. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Oh, yummy, Bobby. Wow, Bobby. that's a GIF right there. <laughs> Someone's working on it. You can catch wow. Bobby again on, on our hour. third hour. You can also get us recipes. Today.com slash food. Also, catch Bobby's Triple Threat tonight on Food Network. Don't forget the cookbook. Oh, yes. Sundays with Sophie. Yes, yeah, Sundays with Sophie and Triple Threat tonight at 9. We'll mm -hmm. see you there. On sale today.
the one, the only Giada De Laurentiis, the famed chef and founder of the website and blog, Giadzi. Is, did I say that right? Yeah. That's so cute. Giadzi is here with a simple, flavorful recipe for pasta zozona. Jada, good morning. Hi. I, it has been a thousand years since we saw you in I know. person. It's How's been everything? A hot it's been great. It's been great. How's the fam? The fam's great. Yeah. Um, Jade started ninth grade, so I we're can't in high school now. That. Oh my so gosh. So the days of like a little kid wow. are over, as you probably know well, because oh, your kids are getting older. They're getting older. Um, and yeah, hard. and so I tonight I'm gonna jet off to Italy. I'm gonna go to Rome and oh. Milan and see some, you know, farmers and some uh, families that, you know make the ingredients. I love when you go to Italy because then you come back and you've learned all kinds yes, of new stuff. Yes, and I collect stuff. all this stuff and curate it. And I already Jonesy. predicted that the tasters will have clean plate Half club and we're off the board. I am well, let's, the let's show this you how to delicious. make it then. What do we do? Pasta okay. Zazona. So I heard, I heard you, you've been cooking. Well, <laughs> that's a stretch. No, okay. I have learned. I, I okay. can do well, a couple can, things. Can you hold a knife and chop this for me? I think so. Or do you want me to do it? How do you want it chopped? Like that. Oh. Well, it's not going to be that good. Just watch your fingers, whatever you do. I know. That's what everyone says. This is a shallot. Yes. Um, I like the shallots because they're a little bit sweeter, but you could definitely use just a regular okay. onion if you wanted to. Okay, but let's the, pretend I did this. Okay, that's great. Perfect. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Throw okay, it in there. there. Okay. No, no, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. I got to take the, the panchita out. So this oh. is panchita. So this, the panchita this, is coming out. Wait, oh, this man. pasta is a mashup of two of Rome's classic pastas, okay? okay? Um, carbonara, which we all know is creamy. Hold on, hold yes, on. delicious. Here, dump it in there. Yeah, I was just like okay. taking an hour. Well, usually, <laughs> usually I do this all in one okay. pan, but you know, today. Okay. Okay, great. That smells <laughs> good. Okay, what is this, sausage? Yeah, and this Yum. is sausage. So it's a mashup of carbonara yeah. and I'm amatriciana, not... both okay. Roman dishes. Okay. One is a tomato based, and one is like sort of a creamy egg based, okay. right? Okay, Would you so use you cook the these same together. Pinchetta plate or whatever this is called, saucepan, if yeah. you can normalize it. Yes, so I use okay. one skillet okay. to right. do everything. That's what some I of the fat from the <laughs> That's what I was trying to articulate. Some of the fat from the panchita cooks the onion. Yeah, I like that. Okay, because the shallot. Okay. okay. What about So all then, this? you can dump the rest of the shallot in here. Okay. This is great because just dump the stir for you. It's I know, it is. Okay. I do like Garlic. That. Garlic, okay. Big old whole Just cloves. have your husband prep it all for you. And I know. then you can come home and put mean, it together. Seriously. Right? Okay, wait, no, tomatoes first. Give oh, why? Why does that matter even? So that I'm going to show you. Yes, the whole thing. So you see how smooth this is? Mm. So in, Ita in Italy, we call this a passata. Mm -hmm. So it's basically no seeds in it. Oh. It's very creamy. Yeah, it you looks... buy it just like this. OK, it looks like ketchup, but isn't. But isn't ketchup, okay. I promise. So I'm warming this up, and then I add the spicy stuff. Yeah, so this is Calabrian chili, mm -hmm. which you may have heard of. You guys in all may have heard of it now. It's very popular these days. Delish. We're, we're too busy eating. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, this makes it spicy, and mm. it's going to make it really spicy, because that's a lot of Calabrian chili. Okay. But you could use red pepper flakes yeah. in place of it. But this has more of like a, a balancing sweet to find, and though? spicy. All these fancy ingredients you've got. Can we find that? Yeah, you can. Okay. Okay. On Jodzy.com. Okay, oh, moving on. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my God. Move on. Left. But you can find okay. it on other places. Now, what too. are these cute little pasta? Okay, so look at this I'm little pasta. pasta. Aren't they the cutest? So these are known as Nodi Marini. So they're from Marini. Naples. Okay. And you see, they look like a little knot. I love yeah. them. And thank you. So like I, little donuts. I found them in Naples a few years ago, and then I started, you know. Bring them back for okay. everybody to have a little taste it. of Italy. Okay. Okay. Sauce is cooking. It yep. takes about ten minutes, but on this burner, it might take five. Okay. Um, anyhow, so that all cooks together. So this is the tricky part, right? The, here. I did not see eggs coming. Well, because I said it was a mashup between carbonara yeah, that, okay. and a matriciana. Matriciana right. has pochita. It's a tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. Carbonara, as we all know. Okay. So how does yeah. this get into it? So it got into the bowl. Oh, I no, separated no, I mean, how the eggs. Egg yes. Get into the recipe. Yes. <laughs> because it's, it's a mashup of car carbonara has eggs. Yeah, I know. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, go. What, so whisk? You're, yes, you're gonna break up and whisk the three yolks. Look at this, y'all. Uh, look at whisk. See, you look how good you are, yo. I think you've learned a thing or two. I whisked. I whisked. Okay. Okay. Ready? So now we're gonna add pecorino, half a cup. Mm. And one cup of Parmigiano de Giano. Oh my gosh, now we're getting to it. Okay, so this is the trick right here. Okay. Because if you add this directly mm. into here, it's what it's happens? It's thick and lumpy. Well, yeah. you, end up lumpy. With, you end up with scrambled eggs. Right, right, Which you don't right, want. Right, okay, no, so no. here we go. This is a it's okay. This is my issue Just with water. water. It's okay, it's okay. Ready? Slowly, this is pasta water. Oh, oh. So we're oh, using it when you cook the pasta, reserve about a quarter cup, and you're going to use hot pasta water to break this up. And create a creamy sauce slowly. So when you add this, this is really bugging me. Okay, yeah. Don't you always want to get that out of there? I don't understand. What the would whisk. you do? It makes no sense. The whisk. Right? It always happens with there the whisk. There you go. Okay. Totally fine. <laughs> okay. Don't take okay. it out on the whisk. It's totally fine. Okay. Leave the whisk okay. alone. Okay. 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 So you're gonna use this instead, yes. and you're just oh. gonna continue oh, okay. to mix Sorry. it. We gotta keep mixing it. Well, mix, and right mix and add. Mix and add. Mix and add. 
Okay. I'm now so I'm glad gonna, they gave us so long for this segment. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and that's it. So that this is this oh, is now the part. We can get that yeah. In there. So now you can get this back in there. All right, we're back to the. And list. I'm gonna add the pasta in the sauce. Remember when you had that cooking show, Samantha? <laughs> Remember, it's coming back for the holidays. <laughs> oh, oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. You should come on it, actually, Jada. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'd love to. Now that you've invited, now that, you, now that you've invited me, I can come on yes. it. Okay, okay. Now what? Okay. So now look. You ready? Yeah. Okay, off the heat. So we're going to turn the heat off. Yes. You want to do this off the heat? Go ahead and add it. And then you pour it in. This is exciting. I, there I we really go. didn't see this coming in the recipe. Well, what there does you it go. really add to it? Just like a thicker sauce? It creates creaminess. creaminess. Go grab a bowl and taste okay, it. Okay, I will. I will. And then this we finish delicious. it. So we basically do this okay. off the heat. You got to do this yeah. off the heat so you don't scramble the eggs. You just keep tossing it. And yeah. the eggs get cooked by the boiling hot water. Mm. Mm. God, it's and so then the heat of the pan. It is so good. Oh, good. See, you look good, 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 good. Then a little bit of pancetta to finish oh, it off. Pancetta. Mm. Did you want to taste? No, I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, that's so kidding. yummy. Mm. And then a little bit more cheese to finish okay. it. And we're done. Okay. Pasta de Zona. Dottie Marini. Jonna, thank you. But wait, you think more. I could do this? <laughs> you got it. She's back in our third hour with a creative spin on a lasagna and a delicious Italian mm. dessert. You can get Giada's recipes and more at today.com slash food. Giazzi, thank you for coming. We Don't love you. We're back in a moment. Oh, this is today on NBC. Thank you, Delicious. planned on ordering Italian tonight, watch this one first. We're going to show you how to make a satisfying spaghetti dish with the ingredients that are already in your kitchen. It's a recipe from the new book, Dinner in One, by New York Times food columnist, Melissa Clark. Melissa makes everything easy, Bobby. Bobby, do you cook? Uh, I, I do not okay. cook. Do Melissa, not cook we're going to teach you him how to cook. Exactly, we're going to teach you. Okay. Okay, so we're going to make, we are making a pasta carbonara takeoff. Okay. So this is an easier version because we're going to do everything in one pan. Wow. I like it. Simple. Yeah, exactly. That's the in it's one. just because everybody, you know, people who love to cook still don't like to do dishes. Yes. So yes. this book is going to take care of that for you. So eggs and pasta and bacon. I'm so confused right now. I know. You're, you're thinking, is it breakfast time or what? Yeah. This is a traditional carbonara combination, but okay. what I'm doing is doing it in one pan, and I'm going to add some fresh greens to make it a little lighter. Okay. Eggs. All right. So we we beat those for me. You can do that. How right? many? Do I, five. So I have um, I have some eggs, and I have some I extra to, egg yolks. Is it just? Is this, do, that's not beating. No, I told you I can't cook. It's, it's the, but we're going to. And then I would get it on our clothes, and it'd be a whole thing. I know. Yes. That's the thing about cooking. It can be a little messy. Okay. Now, okay, I'm going to use two kinds of cheese right here. Now, Bobby, okay. yes. this yeah. one is the Parmesan. Put it right in. How much? Okay. All the whole thing. Oh, the whole thing. thing. Okay. Yeah, we want a lot of cheese. Going at it. It. Is that your wedding ring, the red one? It is. Oh, that's well, nice. Well, because it's rubber, and I thought I was cooking today, <laughs> oh. and I didn't want to... You wanted to slip in an extra, okay. so we yes. get messy. Nice. chewy. Okay. okay, and then, Hoda, I've got also some um, pecorino. I'm pecorino. using two kinds of cheese look at all, look at to that. make it... One <laughs> is a little nutty, one is a little salty. Okay. Okay. There's a cheese called pecorino? Pecorino, <laughs> exactly, because guess what? It's that made from sheep. expensive. Okay. All right, now we're going to add some pepper and some salt, okay. and then this is bacon. 
Oh, so, yeah. Now we're kind talking. of bacon regular. So, this is regular bacon. Mm, um, you'd use good. pancetta if you were in Italy, but use okay. whatever, whatever kind. And I have some mm -hmm. onion right here. Mm, and bad. the onion is cooking in the bacon fat. Oh, and that is part of what's going to make it mm. so delicious. I is that's that. going to have that Holy flavor moly. throughout the whole thing. so good. Exactly. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, here's your silly question. Yeah. Did you cook the bacon and then chop it up, or did you chop no, it up? No, I chopped it first. And that way you don't have to take it out of the pan. And it's just, it's neater that way. All right, now here is the part that I love. So to make this a one-pot meal, we're going to cook the pasta in with the bacon. You're going to boil it in here? We're going to boil it in here instead of messing up another pot. What? And this is also, what's so great about this is that it allows the pasta to take on a lot of flavor from the bacon because okay. it's absorbing it, right? So we're going to add some water right here. Okay. Oops. And, and you just then, cover it. Should be all covered. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna okay. um, first we're gonna just let it simmer for a few minutes, and we cover it. Okay. And then I'm gonna add a little more salt. Okay. And I'm so intrigued by breakfast foods and pasta. I, I know. Isn't it great? Okay. And um, and then another great thing about this also is that you can you have a lot of control over it because you're standing right here, so you know when it's perfectly al, al dente. Okay. So you know when it's just right. So this is what it looks like. This takes about 10 minutes, and afterwards, this is what you get. Do you throw it so, against the wall to see if it's done? That's what my grandma always told me. You want to try it? You want to try it? Do it. Do it. <laughs> but, yeah, that one's not going to work. <laughs> if you do this one, you're just going to mess up your wall. Okay. It's definitely done. Okay. All right, so just give it a little a stir. Swirl it around. Exactly. Now, what about the egg mixture yeah, with so all the... so we have the egg oh, right here. There it is. And then this is what you do. You add it. So this is off the heat at this point, and the okay. pasta is hot. It's still hot, yeah. So it's, it's going to cook the egg. You're not, you don't have raw egg here. You have um, the pasta cooks it immediately. It coats it. It makes this beautiful, silky sauce. Oh, look at that. You're doing that perfectly. Oh, my oh, God. So you just do keep you pushing it around. No. But when you do, you know what you're doing. Okay, so you keep pushing it yeah, around until it's it all around. over. Yeah, and then, okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to, okay. so this is another thing that they do okay. not do with carbonara in Italy. They do mm -hmm. not add fresh greens. Oh, you add it And here? I'm going to add all, yeah. So I have the some spin. Yeah, throw it all the in. The whole thing? The whole thing because That's I said about the cheese. I couldn't believe it. Exactly. I know, isn't it amazing, though? Because it absorbs it. What's this? And that is parsley. Parsley. And basil. And basil. Oh, I love basil. And yeah, and we're okay, just making so a slightly fresher, kay. lighter version. So you keep mixing, mixing. You keep mixing. And another Should we thing. Try it? Yeah. Another okay. thing here is this is a one pot meal because you mm -hmm. have your veg. You have mm -hmm. your pasta, your eggs, your bacon, and your veg. Okay. Do you want a little what extra cheese? What hour do you eat this? Again, I'm so. What, <laughs> what's Any the perfect hour? hour? Of the day. 7 a.m. Right now, or you know 10 what? 10, 10 30. This okay. is a perfect hour of the day. 7 30 oh in gosh. LA. What do you think? Do you love it? Mm. See? That is so good. Bobby, you could make this mm -hmm. at home, right? You good. saw how easy that was. This is what I'm going to say. Sometimes, for example, like a frosty and a fry in the South. We do that. It shouldn't yeah. go together, but it does. Right. This is that. Oh, a so frosty and a fry. Oh, yeah, that's it. a It shouldn't go together, but it does. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, but this does. Yeah. All right. Bacon to make this at home, pasta. head to today.com slash food for more of Alyssa's recipes. Check out her new book. You can get it at today.com slash shop. Dinner in one. I got to swallow here. Oh.